Upon initial contact with Ice T's music, I had envisioned him to be an ill-mannered and psychologically unstable man with an extremely uneducated and barbaric frame of mind. His raps displayed nothing but ridiculous jargon, shocking sexual audacity, and repulsive images of the ghetto. However, after further analysis of his music, I can deduce that he is the epitome of anti-disestablishment terrorism, who embodies the entire spectrum of the urban experience and struggle. But to make things more plain and simple to the layman, I find Ice-T to be the dopest, flyest, OG pimp, hustler, gangster player, hardcore motherfucker living today. To be honest, I am totally and completely on his dick. Welcome to the Ice-T Final Level Podcast, featuring your co-host, Mick Benzo, and your host, Ice-T. Hey, yo, this is Ice-T and Mick Benzo. What up, Mick? Hey, baby, number 29 podcast, man. Podcast number 29, man, and it's been going really good, uh... You know, last week we had Glenn Friedman on here. Oh, that He's was a mother. Something. That was something. Dude. Glenn, yo, the shit that you said in that quote when you was reading back the shit you did on in his book, that was dope too, though. Yeah, well, Glenn is my dude, and you know, my thing is, hold on, the dogs are out of control. No, they as just usual. said they trying to get on a podcast, and they come on, stop, what, stop, they stop, they guys, <laughs> stop. Ain't they real? My thing is that. Me, myself, I, my friends, we don't always have to agree. Glenn has his own opinions. I got mine. Uh, I got you mine. got yours. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I always tell people, as long as you don't cross me, we could be friends. You know, you I have some good Jews, though. No, that, damn sure yo, he's, Glenn is smart, man. And, and today, we're very fortunate. We've been trying to get this person on the podcast, but, you know, always busy. International, just doing things, too. doing too much. It's just oh, so hard and stuff God. like that. Talk to the management and stuff. They was like, "How much is it? How much they getting paid?" We like, we ain't we got said, no money. We, said we just need to do as a favor. They said, "I don't know if it can work though." We yeah. don't know if it can happen. So yeah. what we did was we waited, we waited, we waited. They was fortunate enough to give us a minute of their time, and today we have on the podcast world famous, the one and only. Coco. Coco's in the building, y'all. Really big intro. Yeah, yeah. I feel special. Thank you, baby. <laughs> well, Coco, you know... People don't know when I'm doing the podcast. I'm usually in the kitchen. People think that we're in some kind of studio in Manhattan. No, we're sitting in our living room at home <laughs> in Edgewater. And I'm usually doing the laundry because it's usually on a Sunday. Laundry, dishes... Having my girl toy over, you know, chatting up with her. But they don't know I'm actually in the building at all times. Well, you didn't have to tell them that either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, see, I don't want them to think I got too big that I can't be on the podcast no, you, you, now. Coco's in the background. I'm always telling her to be quiet and watch the dogs are, are fighting or something. They, they, they tend to get crazy whenever we got guests over here. Mm-hmm. But we're very, very honored to have you on the podcast, you know, because you got a few fans, Coco. Thank you. It's a build up. I was just saying on Twitter that I started modeling at 18 years old. So I'm almost 36. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's what? 17 years? 17 in years. In the game. In the game. And she got a lot of yeah. fans. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, Isla's Coco just took it to another level. Yes. But she's, you know, around. And, mm-hmm. you know, we had done the podcast for a year, Mick. And we hadn't had Coco on it, man. And and, and mm-hmm. I, I, she's I, our second female we had. You know that, right? Yeah, we had Roxanne Shante, and that blew up. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know we have a lot of female listeners. Oh yeah. So you know mm-hmm. it was only right. So I mean, thing about me and Coco's relationship is that we both have our own thing we're doing, and you know I'm not on her. Twitter account or, you know, we just try to do it se- separately, but occasionally we'll ask each other for help, you know? Okay. So I said, hey, Coke, would you be down to do the podcast? Mm-hmm. This was not even a question, you know, like she was, she was like, sure, just tell me when. Okay. So we just wanted to wait till the right time. And I guess it's the right time. So thank you, Coco. Thank you for Thanks, being guys. here, baby. Thanks, Coco. Thanks, guys. Well, I'm glad to be here. That's <laughs> cool. at my living room table. All <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, all okay. right. No, no, I'm, I, I want to actually shout out to like the women that follow me mm-hmm. because yeah, men, of course, they follow me because of my modeling picture for so many years, but da, da, da. but yeah, Iceless Coco took it to a different level and like the females that follow me um, are like a new breed 
of females. Mm-hmm. And I think that when I say new breed is like, I think I'm like helping them develop their confidence about mm-hmm. themselves. And they, you know, everybody knows I and I've been married for 14 years. A lot of women, majority, I would say 90% of women, 90 to 95, all want to be married and have their babies and dogs and the pick, white picket fence, but mm-hmm. they also want the sexiness and they want their, their bodies to look good. So I like, I try to in, I, I capture all of that in a box and help all my my fans follow, mm. especially the girls. Yeah, so we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Because yeah. I don't think anybody is born expecting to ever have fans mm-hmm. or ever have anybody care yeah. about anything you say. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, when you do have those people, you feel some kind of responsibility mm-hmm. to kind of like mm-hmm. give them the right answers. You got to give them something. Yeah. I mean, you know, Coco's doing the other well, thing and she looks so great. So they want to know how does she keep herself looking like that. Well, Mickey, you, you've been something. famous your whole life since you were <laughs> Hey, look, man. Hey, look, man. <laughs> I can't help it. The missionary, <laughs> my missionary's doing good too, man. <laughs> the Mictionary. Where can they get the Mictionary, man? At IcedTeeFinalLevel.com. Just click on it. You'll see it. I mean, listen, man. Words you never heard oh, Wait before. a second. Is this a real thing? Yeah, Mike. Mickey yeah. Has, Mickey Mickey oh, I thought this was a joke. Mickey no. has created a dictionary. Oh, no, it's God. a Mictionary. Webster got one. Mick got one. Mictionary. <laughs> yeah, who, who the fuck is Webster anyway? I don't know. He played on a movie, man. A TV show. <laughs> well, you know what? At least it, it takes a lot of, lot of, like, a lot of shit off of me because for a long time, Ice always said to me that I made up my own words. To this day, I'm always mm-hmm. making up words, and he makes fun of me. So now he makes Good. fun of you. So Good. I'm not, I'm not, not, not. Coco <laughs> got, Coco, Coco got a little thing where Coco speaks backwards. But it's okay, okay, I'm a little dislocated. That's a bonnet. She's speaking Yeah, you but know, she, I, no, I, but, but I understand the lingo. And, you know, she can't help it, but she'll say the words in reverse. But because I understand the words, you know, I can, I know what she's saying. Well, I need her to send me a few of those and put in my mictionary because well, backwards, doing good. Backwards speaking? Hey, look, man, it's Ebonics. That mictionary is getting big, y'all. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. All it's right. all good. As long, You know what? This is podcast number... 29. And we got Coco in the building. And this is news. What's going on in news, Coco? Well, if people have been following me on Twitter, I've been really talking about um, the Edgewater fire. And since we live in Edgewater, it sucks. I, I really feel... Hard, hardcore about these families because it's a mile from where we live. Mm-hmm. We actually saw the fire. We mm-hmm. saw the smoke. It was burning for two days. Mm. I feel so bad for those families. It's a new section of Avalon mm-hmm. uh, of condos that live on. If anybody knows about River Road, it's right there on Avalon, and it's a new part of Avalon that just went up that was burnt down. And uh, I. Ice and I didn't even know about the fire. It was burning for six hours, and and people were calling from California saying, are you guys okay? We heard about the fire. This was national news, and we didn't even know about it. We we were at work. You know, we work at um, Chelsea Piers every Mm -hmm. day on Law & Order, so we're there working, and... um you know, all of a sudden, my I, we start getting these texts from our family members and friends. They're like, are you okay? Like, okay, what? With the fire. So they go, you know, there's a big fire in Edgewater. Now, the first thing I think is that our house burnt down because, you know, we're a week away from moving into our house and everything is going up. But, you know, why are you calling me about the fire? Well, uh, it, was pretty, it was pretty close. No, no, but, but the first minute you get the call. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody calls you, are you okay? You start thinking about your kids. You start thinking, why are you asking me, am exactly. I okay? Exactly. So by them asking me, am I okay? I'm like, is it on the news that my house is burning down? Like, <laughs> right. why are you asking me? They like, no, something is happening in your area. Mm-hmm. But it was still, we still were nervous until we actually pulled up and saw what was burning, which was about, mm-hmm. like Coco say, about a mile, it's like a mile from where we live and a mile from where we're moving. And, uh, it was terrible. Yeah, it was. It was. It's real sad. Yeah, still, still, it. still to this day, I was at CVS just um, right when it happened, and there was this lady getting some, um, you know, pharmaceutical drugs. You know, they're talking about how her home 
was burnt down. She was in the fire. She was talking to someone on the phone. And I was like, oh, my God, someone right in front of me doesn't have a home. I feel so bad. But you just don't know what you can do. You don't want to start talking to that person and make their feelings hurt even more. So it's kind of like you're just kind of just dead the issue, you know? A lot of people, even though people should understand this, but people got to understand that there's two types of news. There's local news. And there's national news. That is national. Local news is stuff that they talk about maybe in New Jersey or wherever you live, but no one else hears about it. In your town, it's like, wow, this is a big story, but it didn't make it. But when it breaks nationally, that's a story from wherever you live in Wichita, Kansas, and the whole country hears it. Mm -hmm. So a fire to go national, Mm -hmm. it's a big fire. Hey, it burnt down the whole complex. 400 Mm -hmm. units. That's unbelievable. And uh, so I guess that's that's our local news that we made national mm-hmm. right down the street from our house. There was a big fire. Now, they what did they say the fire started? A maintenance guy, a plumber. plumber but he came, feels bad. Yeah. The plumber started it, you know, try to fix some plumbing and, you know, started a fire. It was big fire. I mean, what, the, what the world is he doing around in electrical? He's supposed to be fixing water and pipes. No, I think he had a t- I think he had a, a torch and he was yeah. soldering. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. sorting. You know, that's how they, they 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 fuse the pipes together. But you know, whenever you live in an apartment building or a big unit, it's different. Like if you have your house mm-hmm. and you mess up, your house burns down. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. but when you're in a a big apartment building, it could be happening twenty units over, and then all of a sudden you didn't start no fire. Exactly. But you're gonna burn down with she it. Wins. You get up out of the bed, run outside, and all your. Mm. I mean. This is not, you know, hurricanes devastate like that. When you have those disasters, it's just mm-hmm. wipe out every, pretty much everything you own. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't even want to think about nah, that. Nah, I don't want to think about it like that. That was bad, but that's terrible. But thank God no one got hurt. That's the most important. Nobody part. got hurt. Yeah. In, 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 you know, but devastation real close to the Final Level podcast, right down the street. If you saw it on the news, we was right down the street from it. And thank God nobody died. And that was news. <laughs> Final level podcast with uh, my baby in the house on the podcast, Coco. What's up, what's up? Oh, shit. What's up, what's up? That's funny. Coco says always people walk up to her and says, are you into hip hop? Are you into rap? And she's like, <laughs> they, always, they always go, they go, they go um, are you a rapper? I'm like, no, do I look like a rapper? Seriously. Honestly, just take a good look at me. And, well, now Iggy and, Azalea's and, out there, and, so who knows? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but could be a rapper. No, but she's ghetto, though. She's oh, ghetto. She see. talks ghetto. Oh, But, she's but I'm not going to, you know, we'll, look at that. Look at what I'm saying. People assume that. I think she fine. went to the ghetto to try to learn how to be ghetto. I don't think yeah. she's really from the ghetto. I think she's yeah. from Australia. If you hang a, if you hang around Wu Tang Clan long enough, you'll start talking like them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. But anyway, we, we ain't right. here to diss nobody. Okay. No, we're not. Uh, no, we're not. Uh, what I'm saying though is that my husband is obvious rapper, so they assume that I might be a rapper, and I'm nowhere close. Don't even ask me to rap because I will. I. I'm just bad at it. She's no, in the dance. No, 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 no. She did a, a record called Shoe Freak. But that's not fly. rap. But it's not rapping. That's, yeah, that's, that's club music. That's club music. And we did that for fun on the show just to show mm-hmm. you how easy it is to kind of make pop mm-hmm. music, you know, just mm-hmm. to play around with it. With but Kenny it was a hit, though. It was a hit. It's still hit. selling. It's still it selling. It came a little hit. But we could talk about, we're going to go into your interview in a minute. Mm-hmm. Right now, this is sports. So what's going on right now, uh, Coco... We know, as far as sports go, you mm-hmm. you don't really watch sports that much, right? Mm-hmm. No. I've always watched sports if we knew someone, though. Okay. So if we know, like, Revis, we know Revis. He's a good friend of ours, so we'll watch sports because yeah. we know a person. New Patriots. That kind of is like with any team that we know. If there's a particular person, we're like, oh, hey, there's so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Um, but Super Bowl's coming up. Mm-hmm. And this will probably come on after Super Bowl. Yeah, this will come on a couple weeks after the Super yeah. Bowl. So yeah. hopefully we had a nice party. Mm-hmm. You oh, know, we have a nice Mickey party. Mickey got drunk. Real good. <laughs> Mickey and I, got I, and I'm, I'm going to be the commentator of the whole thing. After it's over, y'all going to hear about it because I was the commentator. All right? Mm-hmm. I'm putting some of that in my mixionary anyway. <laughs> no, what happens is with Super Bowl, I'm usually the... You know, the house, you know, hype wife. You know, I turn into the winemaker. I open up, you know, whatever. I make you tacos. You the sommelier? 
I'm the sommelier, and I'm also the taco maker. Whatever you want me to make on that day, I'm going to do it. So. Oh, yeah. The guy told me how to say it correctly the other day. He said it's a, a sommelier, like Somalia. A sommelier. Uh, a guy who actually did that for a living. So I said, well, Coco, you're a sommelier. Are we sure about that? That's what the guy, he, that, he, guy. he went to school for it. He went to school for it. And he, I said, well, how do you become a Somalia? He said he had to do all this testing and all these different things. Oh, and he had, to, he had, he had, he had to be able to testing. name wines blindfolded. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that's you, what a wine taste is? Well, that's what a, a Somalia is, is an expert on wines. Okay. So when you go to the restaurant, the guy, he knows every right. vintage. Every, you're like a Somalia in hip hop. Oh, yeah, that, I'm definitely that. You know that, all the different yeah. people. <laughs> no, 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 they might feel but good. sports, I mean, Mickey, is there anything else going on in sports to talk about? I well, mean, I mean, basically, you know, at this point. You Super spoke Bowl, a little bit about Bowl's Alex over, Rodriguez. No, no, saying, but the Super Bowl is over, and I'm going to let y'all know now that New England Patriots did win. No, nah, that's good shit. Nah, that's they bullshit. won, man. He's speculating. He won. <laughs> also, but again, baseball is on the rise. It's coming back. And this is very important to me. It's the New York Yankees. And my man, Alex Rodriguez, said he's going to be a better player and a better person on and off the field for the New York Yankees. So let's look for that pennant this year. Now, so Alex is coming back from the suspension. I mean, we might be sitting on the bench because we're still trying to get in the game. But at this point, Alex has uh, spoken to the but I don't understand. Is, is he is he suspended or not? We're supposed to be, but you know things can change. Things can change. I, 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 I once again, I think what they did to Alex Rodriguez is a big ass bullshit. It was a mistake. They made you a know, mistake. They, I they, mean, they should take it out on inflated footballs or something. They, oh shit! They use him as an example. You know, I don't know how many people in professional sports are doing. You know, Just not doing enhancing drugs. drugs and all that kind of stuff. I think that. I think they kind of did that to probably try to void his contract some kind of way. I bet money was at the bottom. Yeah, definitely, but they couldn't get rid of it. So everything is working out in his behalf anyway. Let's say Alex Rodriguez, we look forward to winning that pennant this year at New York Yankees. You know what I have been watching on sports? What's that? Is that uh, this competition on CrossFit. CrossFit. CrossFit competing girls and men and it's on a whole new level you talk about final level this is final level they can do everything they can do like have squats, you ever seen that mickey 500 no. squats and then right after 500 squats they do 500 sit-ups and the right after 500 well, that's squats, the they show go, you should be on listen they, let me they're very on, inspiring every on, time that, i watch the show yeah. i need to get into it let me that's tell you about the crossfit let that. me tell you about the crossfit show i watched it you know the women compete I'm in pretty good shape. I go to the gym. I do everything. I'm lifting weights. I'm throwing shit around. I can't do one thing that they're doing on this show. These chicks are doing like, you know, crazy pull-ups, crazy. I mean, just, just the, and with CrossFit, they switch up. They just give you a task. It's like, mm -hmm. it's not like a regular workout. They just go, okay, in this CrossFit, you're going to be carrying a duffel bag that has 500 pounds in it or something crazy. And they do it. I mean, it's like the test to see who is the most fit. Period. Right. And the strongest, too, because in CrossFit, you do a lot of um, lifting your own weight, your own body weight. So when you train in CrossFit, you're using, you know, whatever, how much pounds you are. You, you know? do that well. I, well, it's very inspiring. Like I said, like when I watch this, I'm like, oh, my God, I want to be one of those girls. You know, mm -hmm. I want to be pressing that much weight. I'm, but a lot of people don't like the bodybuilding aspect, but I do. Mm -hmm. So when I watch them, like, that is See? sports right there. And that's See? something I'm really into. And I got to get it back to that. This chick is know? strong. Like we moving, we moving mm -hmm. furniture, you know. She's grabbing heavy stuff. The, the movers are like, hey, let me do it. She done snatched the shit out their hand, lifted this stuff. I'm like, this chick is strong, man. Just let her that do it. That sounds like my wife, Tori. She moves, she moves everything and shovel all snow. <laughs> when she finished shoveling, I didn't go out and said, honey, do you need some help? I'll wait till she finished, though. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bum. <laughs> You're a bum. Coco does this stuff, and it's crazy, and people get bent out of shape. they mm -hmm. like, well, she shouldn't be. I'm like, look, everything's a workout to you, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, just recently, like I said, that we were moving. We're moving from one place to another, mm -hmm. and we got movers to move, but I'm doing it all, you know? And the guys have kind of got upset that I was picking up boxes and they were looking at us like weird. Like, why are you going to let her do that? And I'm, and I'm like, wait a second. I like it because I'm working out right now. 
You know, I'm not going to be going to the gym today, so might as well just work out moving with you guys. I do not have a problem with that whatsoever. I want to be lifting and doing whatever. That's me. That has always been me. She's getting prepared for the cross sports. That's, that's what you do. Right. CrossFit. Yeah, so. That's right. CrossFit. Mm-hmm. So, so that's what you like in sports right now. You're getting into CrossFit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm I'm trying. Just tried my very first class. It inspired me so much. I took a freaking class See? down the street, mm-hmm. and uh, it's called CrossFit. You, know? you took that with Tretch's wife, right? Yeah, Cicely. Cicely and I both tried it. We've never tried it before. She's been trying to get me to go to Orange Theory. Mm-hmm. You know, this it's a new thing popping up. A lot of cardio. So it happened to be closed because of the fire situation. Oh. Everything was closed on River Road except for CrossFit. So we decided to take this for the first time. And I'm telling you, I, I took that three days ago and I'm still sore in my butt. And I never hardly sore my butt because I do a lot of weights on the booty area and it's hard for me to get sore anymore. So I'm, I love it. I'm just telling people if you want to like a full workout from your, from head to toe, CrossFit is the biz. I didn't even know she was doing it. What did I, I said early, that's something Coco probably would be trying to do. It. She just said, mm-hmm. her and Cicely did a class in CrossFit. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. hot. Toy, you're next. That's yeah. Mickey's wife. Yeah. She's next. Yeah. And that was sports. <laughs> hey, this is Final Level Podcast number 29 with Coco in the building, the world famous Coco, Mick Benzo. We lounging up here. And this is TV. Now, I watch... When I come home from work, we have a DVR. I, I, it's a TiVo. I, I say TiVo. People are like, I got TiVo. <laughs> T- I like TiVo because I like the little person that jumps around. It's easy right. to load. Okay. <laughs> so we got that, and we have our own shows that we watch. So when we get home, even though I might have to get up the next day at 6 o'clock, me and Cope mm-hmm. kick it in the bed and watch TV. Now, mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of people say, Oh, you can't have a TV in the bedroom. It fucks with the love life. Let me tell you, if the TV can stop you from having sex, then you got a problem bigger than the motherfucking TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This thing called an off switch. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm yeah. But I like, I like laying in the bed and watching my shows mm-hmm. right before I go to sleep, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, we have our own shows but mm-hmm. Coco what's one of you what, what's your favorite show you looking at right it's, now it's funny because like I used to watch like Drugs Incorporated and then <laughs> then mm-hmm. right after that I'll watch mine and I'll be like snap couple <laughs> couples you know snap killer couples yeah like, snap oh, killer couples Lord. we have like a really weird like uh TiVo or now, I told people if, you watched Snap before, <laughs> Coco explain to them what Snap killer yeah, couples okay well that? first first it started with Snap and then they, they went into another um, whole show called Snap Killer Couples. Now, these killer couples are killing up shit. I'm talking. <laughs> it is so bizarre. And, like, you, like, your mouth is open the whole the whole time. Like, people, like, usually it's a couple, you know, of course, getting together. And they're so in love. And they love money and the power and all this good stuff that they have to go into another level in their lovemaking life. So they have to start killing people and start having sex with people dead. And mm. it's so... Necrophilia. It's so freaky and weird that I'm like, I'm kind of that person that likes weird stuff like that, you know, and I I just like to watch it. You know, it's it's interesting That's stuff. Crazy. But the thing is, it's real. It's stories that are real. And I'm like, what? This couple really did that? And it's not just one or two couples. There's like, a, it's a whole season of couples. <laughs> it should been on like five years. It's yeah. a lot of, it's a lot of <laughs> they got they got a, they got a real uh, story. Uh, a lot real. of crazy people. And the thing of it is, with all my background, gangster this, gangster mm-hmm. that, I have never been a homicidal maniac. Like mm-hmm. I can play one on a record or talk crazy mm-hmm. shit, but personally, truthfully, right, really, right. I've never had the desire to go kill somebody. And to make love to them. Well, not, well, kill somebody that ain't done shit to me. Just pick a random person yeah, out crazy. Mm-hmm. and kill them mm-hmm. for some type of a rush. That right. just doesn't click with me. And that's basically what the show is all about. They want rush. From but when you're out at a club and a couple is looking at you, they could be thinking about, you think they want to have sex, they could be thinking about chopping your fucking head off. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Exactly. They could be some crazy. And this bad is a real people. show, so this is not acting. This is actually real. Listen, real. what 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 channels come on? Uh, I don't. Is know it on channels, oxygen? Yeah, yeah, but I don't know the physical channel. Yeah, but it's oxygen, and mm-hmm. it's called Snap 
killer couples. This is an advanced version of Snap. Right. Snap is only the females. Right. But killer couples is the is you know lovers. Okay. What lovers. another show you watch? Uh. Naked and Afraid. There we go. Back on Naked and Afraid. Oh, I like that one. We don't talk about that. Ah, on t- <laughs> Naked and Afraid. And I also like Dating Naked. I like everything naked. You like naked, 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 naked. I think it's fun. I think I know they have to go into, okay, they've done everything in the book. All right, let's just put people naked. Let's shop naked. Let's remake a house naked. We talked about this let's, with Cool Keith. Okay, well, I didn't know that. So That's the right. thing is, this is what I like to watch, and it's and it's it's real fun. Now, you know? I, I they watch, blur, they blur. They don't. You actually don't see. Nah, it ain't it's about nudity. Naked. It's about foolishness. Yeah. I I I watch naked and afraid, but I can't watch dating naked. She knows I won't watch that. I just like Coco. I can't. Watch well, I watch Shark Tank. I check that out. I okay. Like that. Well, like Damon Shark John Tank. is on that. Yeah, I mean, when people come up with their little ideas and try to get them to come in funny, and boy, do they let them have it. They be letting them have it. They be telling them some of the product and the, the ideas you got are dumb. I'm like, yo, this is screw business. That's business. There. See, that goes in my mixionary. That's screw business. <laughs> I watch that show too, but they've got some great ideas. I'm like in awe when but, I but watch the, that. But the sharks will say, I got an idea. How much do you need? You need a hundred thousand. I'll give you fifty thousand, and I want ninety-seven percent right. of your company. Wow, that's <laughs> right, right. true business. That's a good show, there, though. Yeah, it is. Shark Tank. They take all your business and break it down to nothing. Damon John, Mr. Is, Wonderful, is on Shark Tank. He used to run Fubu. Yeah. He's a friend of mine, a really good dude, and uh, he's a shrewd businessman. And uh, you no, know, Mr. Wonderful is the shrewdest up there. He let which one is Mr. Wonderful? That's the older man. Okay. The older, they call him Mr. Wonderful. Then they don't they got Cuban on there? Mark Cuban on there too? He's no. a billionaire. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Mark yes, Cuban yes, that's yes. owns the team, owns, yes. owns, owns the basketball yes. team. He's yep. a motherfucker. We yeah. met him at the Indianapolis yes. 500. We met Mark Cuban. Very cool, it's a good laid show. back. Dude, that's a but good I, show. I could. I think if I was a billionaire, I'd be very cool and laid back too. <laughs> what you worrying about? <laughs> You know, <laughs> and that was TV. And this final level podcast number twenty nine with Coco in the building. Coco's in the building, and the Coco. original, the one and only Coco. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm Damn saying. It. And this <laughs> is movies. Oh, movies. This is something with Coco and you go a lot, though. I don't go to movies as much as y'all do. Why don't so, you take your wife to the movies, man? Cost money. Oh, Lord have mercy. I got TV. You know, there's not a dollar theater around you? Oh, no. That's we where got, my mom goes. Got, she goes to dollar theater. Show, we got Showtime. Ah! We got HBO. <laughs> <laughs> you hear this shit, <laughs> Well, my mom goes to the dollar theaters and she'll go all day. You pay for a dollar, one dollar, one dollar. I don't even know where a dollar I don't theater think they is. Got anymore, that here. Okay, them right. shits are so, five dollars. But theaters. I have something to say. You think about your childhood, girl? Uh, <laughs> no, she still goes. She still. There ain't no them. dollar theaters she out there. Ask my mom. It's a porn they theater they go every single week. Mm. Every week, my mom needs to get online right now to tell you that. Oh shit! But but um, no, I used man. I've been so busy lately. There was a time that, we that Ice and week. I would go every Sunday to see you know, us some movie because we love movies. We're movie freaks. And just, I mean, the last time I went to a movie was actually a month ago. Mm. I had Vanity Vixens going on and I was juggling that. So I had no time to go to movies. So I think the last time I saw a movie was Exodus. Okay. Was yeah. Exodus? We saw that together. Exodus. Exodus. Do you ever, you heard about that movie? Uh uh-uh. uh. It's kind of like a movie about it's a biblical Bibli- movie. Right. You got Christian Bale in there playing Moses. You know, I love Christian Bale. Coco mm-hmm. loves Christian Bale. He's just yeah from the Machinist all the way. What's, what did he play as a kid? The American Psycho. Well, when you said you saw him as a kid, that's oh, what he- son, um, uh, Sun Sun City. Was Sun City. Wait, no, hold on. I gotta get this right. It was it was it was, uh, it was a, a war movie, right? Yeah, shoot, Empire of the Sun. Empire, Empire of the, the Sun. Empire of the Sun. Yes, and I had a crush on him back then because he's my age, and I felt so bad because that back then he played a twelve year old kid, and that was my age. Right. I was that that was yet that young, and 
he lost his parents in this movie and I I was I felt so bad for him. I wanted him to to come live in my house because he <laughs> lost his family in Empire of the Sun. So I I was just like kind of dedicated to him after mm. that. After a while I just started noticing, okay, we're getting older and he's an actor. He's not really Right. That was <laughs> you fell in love with his character. I fell in love with his character wow. as a little girl. Yes. And, and you know, so. Christian Bale is just dope. He's done everything from Batman, mm-hmm. but this time he played Moses. And it was a little strange. I think whenever you watch biblical movies Mm -hmm. and they try to put what happened in the Bible into a film, a lot of stuff in the Bible is kind of like magic. Yeah, that doesn't work out. It's kind of like magic. So when you when you when you see the parting of the Red Sea on film, doesn't it doesn't have it's kind of like doesn't mm -hmm. have the same effect from reading what it happened. Well, because it's very hard to believe. Mm -hmm. You're just like. Okay, mm-hmm. and then there was a, two armies that went in the middle, and then they fought, and then the waves hit them, and, the, and they both alive. And then you got all white Egyptians. Me and well, Coco. not all of them were white. After you saw the movie, there, I mean, the whole the whole slaves. They the were whole well, 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 no, no. So you got the white Egyptians, but the slave Egyptians were black. Right. So it's kind of like it's a twist on the story. It's Hollywood. But well, it's and a movie. They made it a movie. Exactly. That's all. It was it, the, the special effects were decent, mm-hmm. but the problem I always have with the biblical movies is you know trying to connect it to reality, and they sell a lot. But mm-hmm. it was just an entertaining movie. You know, I didn't hate it, but no, no, we ain't gonna say hate. I like those times. I think I was reincarnated, and you know, I was reincarnated several times, and that, that was <laughs> one see, of my you, time. You, you, Eric, you're in this ghost thing. Yeah, you're reincarnated. Yes. So I, so I kind mm-hmm. of like I'm on it. I'm I'm touched by it differently. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, oh man, I I may have lived during that time. You know, and it's very cool. She's but, been reincarnated for real. I, that's what you guys. She this is her second time around. It. No, I probably had like two hundred times around. Yeah, she was a slave I, at one time. <laughs> See, no, 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 I'm serious. But this is this will this is if I have a choice is like the last time I I, I don't I, I want to come to Earth. If there is something, I think I've done it. I think. This is the best you can get. <laughs> I don't think if I come back, it will be any better. Wow. So I want to stop right here. Yeah, because you could get reincarnated and come back and it's really fucked up. Yeah. Like you yeah. think exactly. it's fucked up now and then you come back and it's really <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. Right now it's in good zone. <laughs> well, you know. But, but, um, uh, but I want to speak on something because okay. now I have a chance to speak on it since we're talking about movies. Um. Okay, so I'm into this, you know, the book series, uh, Shades of Grey. Okay? Okay. Shades of Grey. Fifteen Shades of Grey. So, so uh, Ice has been hearing me talk about it, because every time I'm on the plane, I'll read this book. Now, this book, can I just say, really bothers me. It just <laughs> really bothers me, because everybody's like, oh, Shades of Grey, Shades of Grey, Shades of Grey. Ah. And I wanted to read this book and really love it. You know, because I'm, I'm wa- I want sexiness. I want the mm-hmm. hot, steamy passion that everybody's freaking talking about. And when I'm reading this book, there is no that they, they're what they use whips. Oh my oh, god, that that's the that's big strange. freaky part. And I was like, really? She was and bored. I'm bored See? through the whole thing, and I'm wait. It's got me, man. It's got me because I'm in the middle of the book. I cannot finish the book now because I'm in the middle waiting for something better to happen. And so it makes me upset. It makes me eager to get to the freaking end. And the Anastasia, the main character, she bugs me too. She's very whiny, and she has. She has, she has, she's very problematic in her head. You, you, the See, toys, not, Mickey's that, wife sitting right next to me. But she you. said, she basically yeah, said it's overrated. It's overrated. overrated. It's almost like Busy B, they set you up to read it, man. But I wanted, you know to, I wanted to like it allow so to, much. Allow us to read something we want to like. Don't try to big it up so big where you let mm-hmm. give us a letdown. You just gave 15 shades right. of break. That was a letdown. Right. But this, this, move, this book that is book. so... Millions, millions. And millions. Everybody act like it's and so, millions. so and, dope. And, and, and it's not. And look it, I'm on the freaking third book. I can't stop. I can't freaking stop. Because you're waiting for some because, payoff. Exactly. And now this movie comes out. Oh, Fifty boy. Shades of Grey. It's well, creeping Coco, out. Let me ask you a question about the book. Do you think the book is exciting to people that have boring sex lives? Do yes. you think it's because you have an exciting life that 
Exactly. I think it's, you know, for those that don't maybe have lovers in their life, you know, that want passion and they live through this book, I can understand that. But for someone like me that gets it all the time, I'm like waiting for something different that I've never read before. I'm waiting for that. And you was waiting for like motherfuckers to fly up in the air in a gorilla suit. Right. And then, you know, come back down and slip on a banana peel and the dick on the pussy. Like some super fuck. You know, put your pussy up on this ladder yes. right quick. I'm going to swing across some trapeze and don't yeah. worry about the lighter fluid. And, like, you know? the, and the big thing in the book. It's the, not going to happen in that book. Mr. Gray, the big, you know, the big honcho guy. The big thing is that he has this sex room and in the sex room is like whips. And chains and stuff. He's in the S and S. He won't beat his wife. Uh, there go dictionary. Dictionary. S and S. S and S. S and M. S and M. S and S. S and M. S and S. That's for the dictionary. S and S, not S and M, man. Come on, let me. That's my my dictionary. I'm looking in. But you know what? I'm going to tell you. Even though that I've been waiting for this. Now, when Mickey says some word, I just yell out, "Dictionary." Go ahead. Wait, I just cut me off. Okay. Oh, no, you're waiting on a payoff. I'm waiting on a payoff, but I'm still going to go see that freaking movie because I want to see if it's better than the book. So I'm going to drag Ice to see this. He's been hearing about the characters. He's been hearing about me talk about this book. Now he knows about it. So we're going to go. We're going to see it. I don't have a problem seeing it. I'll go see it. I mean, it seems like it could be interesting. I want to see, you know, what women are so excited about as far as the book goes if it's something that i'm not capable of then i might have to add some of that shit to my repertoire you know <laughs> so the only true. movie i wouldn't go see with coco was what? the damn stripper movie what was that shit with Which the one? with the guy uh miracle mike or something oh magic mike magic, magic mike, mike. Miracle I, mike. I told her i said ain't no motherfucking way you're gonna catch me sitting in the motherfucking male stripper <laughs> movie you get all your girlfriends you guys go together, enjoy it, have a good time, <laughs> scream. Because well, I am not going to be the one guy in the theater during Magic Mike. Well, you'd be surprised. There were actually were, there were guys. And, not straight guys. But though. no, there was. And actually, there's a cute little old couple, like 80 years old. And this <laughs> you can tell this, this lady dragged her man out. And he was having a good time. He was laughing. It was a comedy. Any, guys out, any guys out there that have been, you know, that wanted to see Magic Mike, that lined up. The day it came out, yeah. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. I ain't hit a surprise. Good I, luck. I know what male strippers do. I understand mm. the whole hustle. <laughs> it's just not my idea of a nice afternoon going out watching uh, well, you know Magic Mike swing his dick around. Hun, hun. So we made it just to Mickey. Let me tell you, I made this a fun event, and I asked all my family. My mom went with right. me, my sister, um, family, friends. You know, we made it a big event, all girls. And we all wore, like, um, really cute little dresses, had martinis beforehand. We made a really cute girls' day out of it. And um, and it was funny because in it, the movie was, was a comedy. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they're trying to add a love story to it. And that's where it lost me. I'm like, do Magic not add Mike. a love story to some strippers. It was just kind of like... Now you see Magic Mike. Don't lie. Imagine that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I don't go to the movies. It's Showtime, HBO, and all that stuff. Hey, so our movie segment was Exodus, eh, but we still love Christian Bale. Uh, everybody, Coco's waiting to say, what is it, 50 Shades of Gray? 50 Shades of Gray. I said 15 Shades of no, 50. So right. I told him I'm one shade of black. And what? then you got, and then we got a flashback of Magic Mike, which, you know, all which the guys out there that went to see it. You want uh, to come on video to watch it in the house. Right? Nigga, I would, I would definitely watch screens. Magic Mike though. It's, it's, it's. A you gonna come show. home one day? I'll be watching Magic Mike you on, on a big screen. <laughs> You'll be sitting in front of the damn screen at home with your in your drawers and your shorts watching Magic Mike. Nigga, stop playing. <laughs> and that was movies. <laughs> Yo, this is Fine Level Podcast with Ice T, Mick Benzo, and, and the one and only Coco. Mm. Coco's in the building. Mm. Now it's funny because be me being a musician, you know, 
Coco is always around a lot of music, dealing with studio, going to, on tour with us and stuff. Yes, she did do that incredible cameo, excuse me, in the body count video. And you played the angry wife mm -hmm. okay. walking around in the suicidal tendencies video we did, institutionalized, which mm -hmm. you should go if you haven't, go to YouTube and check that out. Just put in body count mm -hmm. institutionalized. Coco plays my wife and she's fighting with me over playing Xbox. I told people that in that video, that's the only real scenario that's not real. Like, we played out that character. Yeah, we people play, really thought that was us. That, that right, yeah, not even I'm not on the reality show. Don't throw <laughs> shit. Well, she, you know, I've had people come at me and ask me what I'm eating. You know, everyone has had someone stand over their plate and say, what are you eating? You know, that's not really fuck vegans. It's just fuck you, motherfucker, mm -hmm. if you're worrying about what I'm eating. Let me eat. And, of course, everyone has had a customer service representative just drive you. Bad yeah, that's shit true. That's true. It's always a foreigner too. Yeah, but my part about me playing Xbox, Coco doesn't really have a problem with me playing Xbox, mm -mm. but a lot of guys do. A lot. I hear a lot of guys saying, "Man, my wife hates when I play my video game." So we acted that out, and that's what you do in music. A lot of mm -hmm. times is the problem might not be yours, but you, Mickey, could tell me something really going on in your life, and I can Ice T become that person. Right, you can act it out and mm -hmm. sing for you. Mm -hmm. So we had to act out this scene where Coco was pissed mm -hmm. at me and started telling me she uh, watched Oprah. And we used to have a slang that we said, uh, anytime you would come home and get broadsided by daytime TV, we call that getting Oprah. It don't matter if she was, if, if your wife was watching Jenny or any of the TV shows, if she was watching Ellen, it doesn't matter. If you come home from work and your wife is like, I saw an Ellen today. That, uh, you know, that you like, fuck Ellen. Like, what the fuck? You know, why are you worrying about that? So the Oprah thing is just, just fuck daytime television. Mm -hmm. And Coco played this crazy wife that was trying to distract me. And everybody likes your... Performance. And, you know, <laughs> I, can I say that when Ice has asked me to do every single from, from his, his cover, her CD covers to, you know, singing in a song... It's, we never, you know, talk about it beforehand. He puts me on the spot every <laughs> single time. He comes with the idea, oh, Coco, just play that part, to play that for him. Oh, we need singer Coco. Can you sing it on the CD real fast? I mean, it's like, he puts me on the spot. So whenever you see me on Isis stuff, that is on a whim. It's not rehearsed? It, it's no, not it's not rehearsed. It's not rehearsed. I'm like, okay, we ain't got no girl, Coco. Yeah. <laughs> I need a girl's voice, Coco. You know, and, and, and but wasn't Coco in a rap video too? A, a song called Coco. What was that? Oh no, that was um that that song is I'm in love with the Coco. Yeah, let's yeah. explain that. Explain let's, that. Explain Coco. that because uh, people kind of got that twisted. Now, um, Buster Rhymes mm -hmm. has a um, artist artist called Genesis, and um, they did a song called called I'm in love with the Coco, meaning cocaine. Right. Yeah, yeah, back mm -hmm. this up too. Also, Buster and Coco share publicists. Mm -hmm. Solji. Solji. Yeah. Solji is Buster's publicist and Coco's mm -hmm. assistant. So everybody who buys sites on Coco remembers Solji. Right. He's part of the crew. So we're connected to Buster Rhymes through business and mm -hmm. he's family. And yeah, mm -hmm. he's family too. So so anyways, they have done this song in the past. They had already done the video and it was more about cocaine. And um, they had to remix the song to to um, to play it on TV. So Busta calls saying, "Coco, we need you in the video," um, and it would be more um, catered towards well, not cocaine. It would be right. catered towards other things. So um, so I said yes, of course, because he's family, and we did the remix. So people have to understand if you see the actual original video we're not in that we're not in that one mm -hmm. we're in the remix and uh that's the brand new one that just came out this month and what I'm it was was bust it was like so many people were confused with the record is genesis singing about coco because coco got a little fame right. and she said they singing about her what's going on you know mm -hmm. and he said this is a way to just without saying anything mm -hmm. eliminate it like you guys be in the video it'll co-sign the video mm -hmm. it'll make okay. it legitimate mm -hmm. and so i come in and i play some gangster that uh, genesis owes money and then coco kind of comes in does a cameo swirls around and i pointed her and said i'm in love with the coco too mm -hmm. okay you know? and make it's it just cute. and it's just it's mm -hmm. just something 
we did and uh co-sign co-sign that video and you mm -hmm. know and we do anything for Buster Rhymes. Mm -hmm. That's just the homie right mm -hmm. there. That's Buster Bus, baby. That's Buster Bus. Buster Bus. Mm -hmm. But it's funny though, as we've been in the business for so long, I've been in the business for so long. You know, co people are confused with Coco. They think, well, damn, she knows right now. By the time she's been with me all this time, she understands hip hop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She now knows. She you know she knows I listen to mostly mob deep and hardcore stuff. Uh, she knows what I don't like. Coco is into dance music. Okay. Right. Break it down, Coco. Well, I mean, I, I was a dancer at a young age. I started dancing when I was six years old, and I continued it through my adult life. And I think that's why, you know, I, you know, I was chosen to do Peep Show in Vegas and then Vanity Vixens in New York because I have some dance music, or I'm sorry, I have some dance behind me. Now, in order... You got a lot behind well, you, baby. <laughs> no <laughs> pun intended, thanks, baby. Um, but, you know, the thing is, in dance class, when you're growing up, you have to be able to you, listen to all genres, mm -hmm. you know, even country and classical, jazz, you know, R&B, hip hop, mm -hmm. but you don't just listen to one. But my favorite is dance music because I, that's mostly what I did my whole life was in, was in jazz, tap and ballet, you know, like right now, my favorite song is Chandelier, you know, it's been out for a while. But I love the video because it's a little girl like going crazy, like ballerina style, you know, um, in this video. And it's so beautiful. But I'm totally opposite from what Ice is. Ice is hardcore. I'm so not hardcore. One of her other favorite <laughs> videos was Turned Down for What? That video. Oh, that was, yeah, yeah. Turned Down <laughs> for What? And there's this. There's the remake a, video with the, the uh, remix with DJ, DJ Snake. Snake. Yeah, DJ Snake. It is hilarious. Everybody has to go. And this is actually the one video I retweeted on Twitter. I never really, you know, re, you know, retweet videos. But um, this is so crazy because, like, their dicks are, like, moving. And, and then, they're her, like, this big girl's boobs are moving. And then it's, it's a play off their body parts. And I thought that was really funny. And it got me to watch. Turned down right. for what? Turned down for what? Turned now, question. You were also in the video with uh, me with the Ponder Burning Body as we remade that song. Yeah, that was a little cameo. Yeah. And that was organic, too, because I wasn't even supposed to be in it. I just happened to be on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. And I was there for Ice because Ice had done a small part for them. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Coco, get into it real quick. We want you in it. And so I said, what the heck? I'm like the token blonde girl. <laughs> <laughs> she jumps in. I'm the token. If you need uh, blonde with big boobs, I'm the girl. Well, you know, it's funny you would say that though. But when when she did Law and Order, as for you, they were like trying to find um, a part for her. This isn't music, but they were talking about it. So we need a girl, hopefully a blonde. We need a girl who's curvy. We need a girl with big boobs. You know, like Coco size. You know, and they kept referring to Coco, and then Coco they go, "Why don't we just ask Coco?" <laughs> <laughs> Since you keep saying her name, mm -hmm. and then she got the job and stuff. So mm -hmm. you know, in, in our household, we go from we go from hardcore music, which I do, whether it's hardcore rap, mm -hmm. to then like like Motown type stuff, laid mm -hmm. back, smooth music from mm -hmm. Sade to Dramatics and Delphonics and Blue Magic. Mm -hmm. Then we go to EDM. We listen to lots of techno club music and mm -hmm. stuff, and we drive. And then when we're in a car, like. Uh, we listen to chill a lot. That's yeah, on uh, satellite yeah. radio, right? Yeah, yeah we listen to that because it's mostly instrumentals and it allows us to have our conversations. Mm -hmm. I really can't drive my car and listen to new hip hop because I don't really like listening to these niggas yelling at me, telling me about their money and shit. It, just, it confuses me with what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I'm trying to get some money, so I don't really need to hear you telling me what you got. Yeah, you know, I I, I don't I don't. It's, it's, it's not conducive to my uh, thought process, right? The moment I'm trying to get some money. So you over there, just bought a watch, just worth for house, and just spent this. I got money on the flow. Money, Dig it. money, money. Spent that shit. I burnt that shit. I shot that bitch. I got that grip. Yeah, I don't need that. Right now, just I'm, I'm rolling. Just I'm, chill. I'm trying to concentrate on my next hustle. So okay. I keep chill on in the background. Distracting distracts me from what, you know, the ism you did. Right. And that was music.
Hey, this is podcast number 29 with the infamous Mick Benzo. And the one and only Coco in the house. <laughs> and right now, I get to interview Coco. Oh, shit. You going to interview Coco? Yeah, I'm going to interview Coco. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things. Maybe the lot- audience don't know about but you, you know. Yeah, I know yeah, about it. Right. And so let's just start it all the way. So no, no better place than to start it off at the beginning. That would be fair. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know... When did you know where were you born and where did you grow up? Real quick, just give us a little outline of what how it all She's started. She's from LA, right? Okay, well, I'm originally from Palos Verdes, California, mm-hmm. and that's in Southern California, 1979. And mm-hmm. I, I, my family, my both my my mom and my dad met on uh, Bonanza, the television show Bonanza. Yeah, at 14 years old, that's how they met. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, they got married when they were 18. So they mm. think they, 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 and this is how my sister and I found out that my parents were actors. They didn't tell us. They never even told us. We were actually, you know, surfing through the, the TV, you know, going through the channels. And up on the screen is my dad, you know, as a 14 year old. And we didn't even know it was him. And my sister and I were talking like, oh, that's funny. That looks like dad. If he was a kid, that looks like him. And then my mom goes, oh, that is your dad. Mm. Just like that. Just nonchalant like that. So they never actually had a sit-down conversation with us, but um, they met there. And uh, uh, from there, my mom had, she was in soap operas. And a particular time, she was wearing lingerie. She was on a set, and she fainted. She collapsed. They took her from ambulance, took her to the hospital. In the hospital, they gave her a couple days to live. This is in L.A., so um, my sister and I at the time were very, very young. Mm-hmm. Um, so we grew up pretty much with our grandma, you know, at an early age. So we were given our uh, last goodbyes with our mom. So I would say this was around 11, 12 years old. And um, so we said our last goodbyes, but we didn't know this. My mom took all of the needles and everything out of her body and ripped them out and, f- and fled to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we were getting a call from her like a couple weeks after saying we're moving to Albuquerque. We didn't even know she was alive at this point. Mm. She, we're moving to Albuquerque because I got to live with a, uh, I'm sorry, I got to work with a holistic doctor. Because LA doctors gave her only a couple days to live. So it, we had to move to Albuquerque to work with someone else. So Now, holistic doctor, holistic. I mean, with it, with, with it, they don't use medicine? Oh, they don't, yeah, they, they, they stay away from pharmaceutical drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, and like my mom's case, she had a, t- a tumor the size of her fist, and they gave her a certain type of tea. The tea is nasty and disgusting, but it shrunk the cancer. Mm. Believe it or not. And she's she's living to this day 28, mm-hmm. 30 years later. And here we are. We're, we're, she's she's live and well. But it was because of the holistic doctors. I don't really believe in it so much. But going what through what my mom did, I kind of took that as a miracle. And that maybe you should listen to holistic doctors. So, yeah. So, you so, so you're dealing with the family stuff. Now you're yeah. growing up. So what mm-hmm. did you think you were going to do with your life? What was your plan? Well, ever since I picked up a Playboy that my grandpa had in the in the garage, <laughs> and he collect old school Playboys. I mean, like the very like Marilyn Monroe days. Yeah, back in the day, people used to hold on to their Playboys. Yeah, they're, they're, they're collector yeah, take items. Take You collect them. Right, mm-hmm. right. And he had a collector. Or you might want to flash back and see some titties from mm-hmm. the past. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but when he had them all and set up in nice stress. in the garage. And they, they release the stress. <laughs> release stress in the bathroom. Hey, I'm a collector. I'm a collector of fine pornography, <laughs> so I think I'm going to need these. Well, when I saw that, I my sister and I were in the garage, and we weren't supposed to open up the book, but we opened up the book. And I looked at her, and I pointed to the to the centerfold, and I said, I am going to be one of these one day. Okay. I That's, that's what I knew I was going to do. I don't... See, at this time, I'm a tomboy. Right. I, to me, I'm not cute. I'm just a tomboy. I just yeah, play black hair. I, I have dark, I have almost black hair. People, mm-hmm. when they see me, like my real color is black hair. And um, I'm just a little shorty and 5'2". But I played really good sports because I was athletic. And so I was popular with the guys because I always hung out with them. You think so? Well, but I wasn't popular with people. People probably thought, baby. You think they just want to hang out to the place? 
Speak on it, Nick. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what you <laughs> thought. No. Oh, the guy was with homie no. cross under the, uh, under the, what's his name? <laughs> what was that joke he was underneath the table? Oh, no. I don't know. The guy wasn't playing that game. <laughs> the monster, monster's reign. <laughs> we didn't want to play sports. So, <laughs> come on, let me Come tackle. on, we're going to play sports. I want to I tackle you. <laughs> okay, you guys finished? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we were, I'm sorry, Coco. <laughs> so anyways, you know, I was popular amongst, you know, my, my group at school. But, you know, when I say tomboy, I was a stylish tomboy. <coughs> I mean, back in the day, I was wearing, do you remember the leggings under your skirt? Type like Madonna? Madonna. Yeah, yeah. But I was wearing that as I was playing football. Like, and I, I would definitely want to be on the other <laughs> team. <laughs> but... <laughs> Baby. So anyway, um, so as being a, this tomboy, I wanted to be one of those girls in the magazine. I, but but, but I, mean, I got that. So now you decided you want to be the Playboy girl. Mm-hmm. But what were the what were your first steps when you started to decide that right. you wanted to be you know in front of the camera? Well, so I like speak. competing, and I think my first competition was I was in Beverly Hills Studios. Um, it's it's um, a competition that they hold every year. And they take like new talent. So that's back in Los Angeles. Back in Los Angeles at 14 years. This is at 14 years old. Mm-hmm. I tried out for my first competition. And what you do is you go there and you compete, you know, you, you read lines and you kind of audition. And they pick five people to go to their prestigious school. And it, it, and it at this point, to go to the school cost $10,000. And it was an acting commercial. Well, you had that, acting. right? You had that ten thousand, right? Hell no! Are you kidding? How you can have fourteen years old? And you know what? I just wanted to compete because I felt like it was it would be fun to do Did that. Did your mom had the ten Gs? No, no. You have to understand the the, the people that won was given a scholarship of ten thousand dollars to go to that their school. Mm-hmm. So this is what I was competing for. Oh, to get that scholarship. So you yes. didn't have to I got you. Yes. You're not listening. You're wa- you're on Twitter right now. No, so, I'm not. <laughs> listen, it it was a big thing because I was thinking, all right, I'll I'll try out for this competition. Who knows? I might win this ten thousand dollars to go to the school. Well, what do you know? Um they picked out the five kids and the five kids was me. So mm. I went to acting school and I went there and I thought that was like the biggest thing I could actually go through because there's no way in hell my parents a, had ten thousand dollars. Big accomplishment. And um, but at that time I had to move to uh, I had to be full time with my mom in Albuquerque. Back so out, after I did the school, I had to move back. Now in my class was Jessica Alba. How about that? Okay, mm. so she was actually in my and she, her name wasn't Jessica Alba. Her name was Jessica Brown. Mm-hmm. And she, yeah, we actually mm-hmm. had a whole. They have a whole class on what you should change your name to to become more exciting. And she had this conversation in class, saying she's going to change it to Alba. That was her cousin's, cousin's name. How about that a little inside mm-hmm. trivia? Yeah. Now, do you so, think Jessica Alba would remember you from that class? No, no, I don't because we're we we're children. So. We're children. We're fourteen years old. I had dark hair at that time. I definitely didn't have this body back then. I had my hey Jessica out there. Coco was one of your <laughs> classmates and stuff. Yeah, she so. sat right next to me, girl. How about that, Jessica? <laughs> well, she's dropping some jewels. She's saying Jessica Brown, and she's telling you that it was yes. your cousin's name. So yeah. that was something she would have had to be there to know. Exactly. That's real talk. What made you move toward modeling? Well, I never really wanted to act. I thought it was just something fun to do. Okay. Uh, I I always just wanted to model, and I don't think you could really, really, truly model until you get to 18. Okay. So I kind of had to wait. So while I waited to get to 18, I acted, and I was in theater. And, you know, I did a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Now, um, when I hit 18... I thought, you know, what the hell, let's try a fitness competition. Mm. You know, like I said, I'm really competitive. I mm-hmm. love competitions. I love contests. I was in a contest every single week. It just it was enjoyment I got out of it. Um, so I tried Miss Eugenia mm-hmm. in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, where there's thousands of girls competing for this. It's, and everybody would say, Coco, don't expect to win the first year you go because they don't even look at the newbies. They don't even look at those people. You have to go there four years in a row for them to even see you. Mm. So I was like, no, no, I'm not expecting to win. I just want the experience. I want to to check it out. So I go the first year. I did it. I won. Wow. You won. Another accomplishment. The fitness competition. First year. 
first year, so it kind of blew me away. So actually, a lot of things kind of just happened for me without really even trying hard. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I should try a little harder at this, you know, because I'm not really taking anything serious. So from then, from my fitness, I was started body modeling, erotic modeling, body modeling, lingerie modeling. Uh, I did, I did Playboy. I did things that did the magazine was, or the mansion. Well, I would no, I would do, um, I would do their parties. Oh. See, I um, what happened was with Playboy, I I uh, auditioned for Playboy, and I got a letter in the mail two weeks later saying we want you to come to New Year's Eve to meet meet Hef because that's how they get you in. You meet Hef first before you start modeling mm -hmm. or doing anything. They have to like you as a person. Uh huh. So um, I started from there, and I and I worked for them, and that was all good. But really, I like the fact that you can bounce around and just do little modeling gigs here and there. You have to build your resume. All these girls come up to me and go, "How do I model? How where do I go?" And it's all about building your resume. You have to get a lot of pictures in the works. You have to show your work. You have to show your versatility and how you can go from one person to the next person. It's acting. I figure modeling is acting to me. And um, so I, I, from from there, I I was I started at eighteen, and I when I met Ice at twenty two, I I met him, and I wanted to kind of change my my ways. Now people always so, want to know the story. They're like, right. "How did you and Coco meet?" And uh, it's a simple story. By her being a model, she was doing other things. She was doing, you know. They have models show up on video shoots. They have models from film, different things. Get some models, get some pretty girls. And Coco has an agent and she gets a gig to work on a video that one of my friends was doing for a film. It was a music video that was going to be connected to a theme song of a movie, a small independent film. So I went out there once again, doing a favor for my buddy, especially you know, my buddy, uh, uh, Ricky Ricardo, who is connected to MC, rest in peace. Rest in peace. And he um, asked me to come out to do this thing. So, you know, indirectly through MC, bam, 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 I met her. So I come out there and uh, I was in one of my modes. I was in some mode like, you know, we've all been there. You're doing your friend a favor. It's not necessarily where you want to be. Right. I'm just here. I'm just here. I'm just yeah. here. Yeah. So everybody knew that, but they were still glad I was there. And then my homies and I was doing it, but they was like, Ice is kind of like grumped out and they mm -hmm. saw Coco. So they like, Ice is a player. Ice put a girl that'll give him something to do. Yeah, that'll give him something to do. So my boy goes and grabs her. You know, she's in the bathroom. They grab her. Then she, they bring her to me. Uh, I'm sitting in this other room. They say, we want to introduce you to somebody. Now, me personally, I don't like being introduced to women. Because now I feel accommodated to be nice to somebody that I might not be into. Because they kind of set it up like that. I'd rather do my own fishing. You know, oh, let yeah, me for sure. let me walk up to I don't bring push people. girls don't like it either, mm -hmm. pushing guys up on you, mm -hmm. you know. So I turned around and lo and behold it's Coco. Now she's really close to me, so I'm like, I look at her teeth. Her teeth are perfect. Mm -hmm. Then my eyes open up and I see she got these big ass titties. I'm like, God damn, mm -hmm. like what the fuck? Right? <laughs> but now my brain is like, okay, stereotypical white girl She's going to have big titties and she's going to be bone skitty, you know, because I know mm -hmm. girls get boob implants. So I'm like, you know, well, especially in California, in California, like, right. land yeah. that she like, turns around <laughs> and I say and I see the padow. I'm like, God damn, girl got ass. Like, I'm like, <laughs> really? So in the words of Iceberg Slim, I fought to remain calm. Right? <laughs> so I said, OK, cool. And I really was lost for words. And so I said, hi, da, 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 da. And she walked off. And on the exit, I really understood how much I loved her. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get a back. I, I guess so. I, cool. So, you know, she didn't really know who Ice-T was. She mm -hmm. was just caught, right? You just called in. Right. I mean, I had heard of your name, but, you know, I didn't know what you've done. You know, like, I didn't know who really Ice-T was. She wasn't in that world. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. She wasn't in that world, which was good with me. Exactly. You know, because I, you don't really want to catch a fan a fan like like coco said earlier today about christian bale 
they could be in love with the role you played exactly. and not you. Exactly. A fan likes, oh, I liked you in New Jack City. Well, that was a role. That wasn't me. Exactly. So anyway, uh, I, I, I decide I'm going to go try to talk to her again. I walk back over to her. I said, you know, when I first saw you, I was kind of lost for words. You dropped dead gorgeous. I said, have you ever considered dating a gangster rapper? Now, the reason I use that open ling line, because I had on a red snakeskin suit that day. I'm in a video mode, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, what else the fuck do you say? I'm not going to say you're a plumber or something. Yeah, so she, <laughs> she don't know. what You didn't know what a gangster rapper was. Well, I laughed because I really, when I thought all rappers were the same. I didn't know there was gangster rap right, and there was another words. kind of rap. Yeah, so I, so I was like, gangster rap? Well, I said, okay, well, if you're nice... And out of nowhere, I said, well, baby, you take the N off nice, you get ice. Yes. And she was like laughing. I'm like, God damn, where did that line come from? Yes. <laughs> you know, sometimes players, we talk so fast, we just, Shit just happened. might say some fly shit. You didn't even know how the hell it happened, right? Uh -huh. so I, I, thought, I was like, did you use that before? Because it came out too easy. Nobody ever gave me the lead in nice. So right. she mm -hmm. said that. And then once she started laughing, you know, it was like the green light. So mm -hmm. I was like, you know. First thing I did was qualify the customer. I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, are you with your man? Are you married? Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I conversate with you? She said, mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, no, I said, it's okay if I flirt with you, you know? And I always tell dudes the word flirt, it's a great opening line for women. It's not offensive. It gets to the point. It lets them know what you're about. Mm -hmm. Guys like, let me buy you a drink. Let me do this. I can get you in a video. That's all mm -hmm. bullshit. And women don't like that. Just mm -hmm. because a, a woman knows mm -hmm. whether she wants to fuck with you probably within the first three minutes. Mm -hmm. She'll know whether, so just get to the point. I'm trying to flirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she could have said, no, it's not okay. Mm -hmm. I'm with my man or whatever. Mm -hmm. she could, but she said, yeah. But the line work, everybody, when we say that story, everybody's like, that's kind of cheesy. I'm like, no, but that's my personality. I think cheesy's funny. It's I cheesy like if it anybody funny. else says it. <laughs> it's cheesy if anybody else had said it, but Ice-T with a red snakeskin pimp suit on at the time. Yes. Right. And that, actually, that's what I was attracted to first. I love that suit the that outfit. he was wearing. The outfit. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm kind of a flamboyant chick, too. And when I saw his outfit, I was like... Well, whoever Ice T is, okay, that's one thing. But I like his suit, <laughs> and then I have to say, after that, when he like he qualified, when he says he qualified, well, that's that, that's, 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 that's that, your term. That's a sales term. Like when you're selling something, you qualify the customer. You find out, mm -hmm. are you buying today? Are you interested in it? Mm -hmm. So I went to a sales course when I was a kid. You know, right. to learn how to sell car stereos. Right. And that's what you do. You know, don't waste any time on somebody who's not buying a day or they're not in it. You find <laughs> out. So well, I'm going to find out really quickly if it's even worth me trying to Mac. You know, are you married? Yes. And he's here. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a, that's a no, no. That's it. So no. I'm, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. you, you know, can I talk to you? That's what qualifies. So, so he did. And then after he did, I think to keep my attention, he started with his magic tricks. He started taking out quarters out and showing how he can dis the quarters disappear and I have to say he is great with his hands. I basically am, you give me a green light and say it's okay now my job is to be charming. I'm going to do jokes. I'm going to mm -hmm. try to win you over. When a girl gives you that laugh and says mm -hmm. go she's saying you have a potential at getting some action. Mm -hmm. Now fuck it up dude. Let me see mm -hmm. you fuck it up. Exactly. You know so we ended up talking next thing you know, we exchanged numbers. Those were best back in the day at a two-way pagers. I got her a two-way pager, a little Motorola pager. Yep. I came back to New York and uh, we started to talk back and forth. And within a week or yeah, so. Yeah, that's how we dated was through the two ways. For about a week and a half. And then she said, I'm coming to New York. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty of this story is when you were coming to New York, Guess who was staying at my house? Mick and Toy. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey had just come from Virginia. Yep. And I convinced Mick, come back to New York. This is where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Come to New York. I'll help you get started. You can stay at my house. I had a one-bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. And y'all can stay with me until you get on your feet. And let's yes, get sir. it going. Yep. So Mickey was laying with me. And in comes Coco mm -hmm. from New York. Yes. And no, to New York. From Arizona. Oh, yeah, yeah, because at the time, um, I, I, I bounced around 
all my life. <laughs> I was, I'm from California <laughs> to New Mexico, from New Mexico to Arizona. Mm. I really like it in Arizona. And uh, I was living in Arizona. I had to be close to California because that's where I did auditions. Right. Was it that was close hour, enough to not live in California, but still mm-hmm. work in California. And uh, when I, you know, he just got on Law and Order. That was back when he was on what? Two seasons? Yeah, about by second season. See, yeah. And uh, I came out to New York and I literally like moved within like a within couple a month. months. Yeah, within a month. It, mm-hmm. it, was, it, it was funny though, but I'll never mm-hmm. forget the story that mm-hmm. you were over the house and you start cleaning up my fucking house. Like you were cleaning my house and Mickey was mm-hmm. sitting there and you got the vacuum out mm-hmm. and all that. And that, this is like you'd only been around a minute. Mm-hmm. Now, so I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I look at Mickey. He goes, she wants you, dog. <laughs> she wants you. Like, regardless of whether you right, want her, mm-hmm. she wants mm-hmm. you. And that's when we came up with the game mm-hmm. that says when a woman wants you, she will move on you domestically. Mm-hmm. Right. A, a female that wants you, a girl that don't like you ain't doing shit domestic. Mm-hmm. She ain't cooking nothing. nothing. She ain't cleaning nothing. nothing. She just wants to go out to eat. And then she drop her your money off. and drop me off. But when a girl likes you, she gonna pull out that fucking vacuum mm-hmm. and start moving shit around well, your crib. Let it and you I'm clean, baby. Oh shit! <laughs> and I was like, wow. So anyway, long story short, I you can. and I got together. Mm-hmm. Everything was was going good, and you now you're a model. Mm-hmm. You're a model. So so now. Now when I when I transitioned to New York. Uh huh. I needed to make a decision. Was I going to continue modeling or was I going to become a businesswoman for ICE? And I really felt like that's where my heart was. I am a businesswoman, you know, through thick and thin. Mm-hmm. I, I think throughout what I've, my whole life, even being a model, you're still, you can still be a businesswoman. That's right. So um, I actually put my modeling, modeling career on the uh, back burner for six years. For six years. People, they don't realize this, but I just became his wife. I just became his wife. Uh, I wanted to become the businesswoman. I was his assistant. I I was like his like right hand girl, right? So it was not until 27 years old, you know, this was from 22 to 27. I was like, you know what? I'm kind of nearing 30 years old. I still have the body right now. Why not I just do this last part of modeling and see what I could do with it? And and that's when I went to calendars. My calendars boomed. Well, I, I did that first calendar. Yeah, when she came at me, she said, Ice, I'm ready. To, I, I want to do some more modeling. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I have no mm-hmm. problem with that. What do you want to do? So we had cars. I've always been a car guy. So we had all these cars. I say, you know, nothing people, guys especially, like more than cars and girls. Mm-hmm. So let's do a car calendar mm-hmm. and you model on them. So at the time, I had about six cars. We needed six more cars. Uh, mm-hmm. I have friends with hot cars. And uh, we went around and we shot mm-hmm. most of the calendar with our cars mm-hmm. and the rest with uh, my boy, uh, Alan, in Vegas. Yeah. Pulled up, popped motoring. up some cars, 702 motoring. Mm-hmm. And... uh we got our calendar, and the calendar blew. Now I the think fuck it's up. because I had some a little popularity because they knew I was Ice's wife. But I think the fact that I've I've built up that that character for so long, when I finally did go back to modeling, they were like, "Oh, this is what she really does." Mm-hmm. And it it like that calendar really set me off. Honestly, that I bought my house with calendar. You know, I, I that <laughs> one. I know it sounds strange. Yeah, but she that bought one, a house in Arizona. Mm-hmm. One calendar is what set me off. It was the spread out the jail systems. I know that sounds funny, but I mean, <laughs> no, I'm no. pretty popular in the jail systems. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> <Appreciate> <laughs> <it>. Shout out <laughs> to my dudes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but no, the thing is. Uh, after that, I did one calendar. I, did, I think I did six calendars after that. I've had eight different websites, my own official website. Well, you know what it was? I designed them all. When Coco got in the game and when she decided I want to get back into the game, you know, I already told Coco, I said, I can't be your manager. That's too much work. I said, but I'll be your consultant. I got a lot of knowledge in this game. And mm-hmm. you see guys sit around and wait to ask me questions. If you have something you don't know, just ask me. I'll give you my opinion. I'm not mm-hmm. going to push you unless I see you do something terribly wrong. Mm-hmm. I said, if you want to do these calendars and all this shit, 
do it like an independent record label own your own your pictures you're not broke mm -hmm. you don't need to work with a photographer and have him own your pictures <laughs> right you hire him so mm -hmm. she would pay a thousand dollars to a photographer mm -hmm. own all the pictures mm -hmm. and control the images and she bought her own website mm -hmm. right and people like oh well, ice got money that no no I gave her a little seed money early in the game just to get her started. She reinvested every dime she had back into her websites over and over again because I know how important it is for someone to have their own accolades. You don't want to be given everything. You want you need to win so you can have your self value. So Coco, after the beginning. You know, a couple grand or whatever. Mm -hmm. She basically has done this all by herself. Mm -hmm. And well, I ain't taking them damn pictures. I mean, I don't look good in the bathing suit. <laughs> she, <laughs> she had to work out and right. bust her ass. And then they also say, like, uh, I was an internet se sensation. And I think that's funny to hear when I hear it. But uh, it's the truth in a way because this is when the internet was just going up. It was just like there wasn't... There was no social media other than MySpace, which was like the beginning. Right. And so I had ten thousand. I'd have ten thousand pictures in 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 the world in the internet right now floating around. Or more. So, yeah, this is ten thousand. And, and you know who else? At the time, it was a girl named Cindy Margolis, mm -hmm. and she was supposed to be the number one girl on the internet. Mm -hmm. So of course, like we say, take advice from people you admire. So we mm -hmm. went to her site and I looked at it. And I'm like, you know what it is? She's giving the pictures away free. Mm -hmm. She's giving all this away free. So that's causing it to flood the internet. Mm -hmm. Is you know, she got something on there you can buy, but most of the pictures are free. Mm -hmm. Right. So what Coco did was just put her pictures out there for free. Just take them. Mm -hmm. Just take them, mm -hmm. but it has my logo on them. Right. Mm -hmm. And let's 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 just get it all over the place. Mm -hmm. And also, there's an elephant in the room. We got to talk about it. Coco had a big butt for a white girl, mm -hmm. and it was rare. You know, they hadn't really seen a white girl with a nice big brown butt. I mean, mm -hmm. there were no famous girls and, at the time. Mm -hmm. And then I, I have to say, though, when on that same subject, honey, I, I was trying to cover up my hips for so long because I was considered fat in California. <laughs> like he just said, the, the typical body type in California is a blonde. Girls with big, big boobs that's and it. no body. Mm -hmm. And that's what they want. That's how, that's what they want. But I could never have that because no matter how much I would diet, no matter how much I would do stuff, I could never get rid of my thighs or my butt. Couldn't hide it. I couldn't hide it. So I'd always cover it up so I can mesh in with the girls in California. Mm -hmm. So when I got with Ice, he's really the one I, that I give credit to because he's the one that pushed me and said, don't hide behind. Don't sure that black is. men sure love that ass. ass. Black, sure that ass. black men love like booty. Show sure that ass. Put them jeans on. Hey, show sure that ass. Shake what your mama gave you, girl. So I was like, I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. I'll never forget. I was like, wait a minute. You, your butt, she said, oh, if you like my ass, all I got to do is eat. It'll grow. I'm like, any bitch? <laughs> I'm like feeding me macaroni and cheese and mashed potatoes. Yes, no, my body. Like, like, her, her butt my, grew from like, what What will you say? It was like. I think it was like 39. 39 before. Or maybe even smaller. Yeah. 38. And that shit just grew. Now that shit, she just. 43. Yes, 43. And she just gave, gave away a bunch of clothes. The motherfucker's like, it has its own mind. The motherfucker. <laughs> it, is, it has its own mind. And I'm on a. And between eating. And, and and going to the gym and building muscle, you can get a big butt. But you got a fitness thing out too, right? So you got a fitness app? Yeah. I Actually, yeah. I, I came up with my fitness app last year called Coco's Workout World. And yes, it's just on Apple products at the time. I'm working for droids. Believe me, everybody's asking me about this, but I'm, I'm pushing for it. Fitness app. But if you go to uh, search on iTunes, Coco's Workout World, I pop up and I'm actually featured this month mm. as, as a, as a, uh, health and fitness in iTunes right now. Like the the, I'm right next to Julian Michaels, baby. Yeah. Okay, but we got to give Michaels. a shout out. <laughs> we got to give a shout out to all the urban magazines. You know, we okay. call it butt modeling magazines. All the the kings, all the different They're smooth, smooth king. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we were in Don Diva. She, you know, Coco said, you know, my man's from the hood. 
Y'all came to me first. All the black magazines came to her first and gave her crazy love. Like K Slay? Yes. All K yes. Slay, she did K Slay's magazine yeah. too. And they broke her and they showed her a lot of love. They did. And that's and then listen to this. After she did fifty covers, right? Of all kinds of urban magazines, Playboy came back. Yes. And Playboy all of a sudden now, when she first worked with Playboy, she wasn't in the magazine. They come back with a check. Mm. Mm-hmm. And uh, she did Playboy. What month did you be, Playboy? In March, 90... Oh, no, no, no. 2008? 2008, I think, of March. But they want me to play, like, the housewife from New York. Now, if you open up a Playboy, it's very California vibe. It's very, oh, glamorous. It's not really mm-hmm. East Coast vibe at all. Mm-hmm. I, I know that sounds weird, mm-hmm. but we did the grimy like photo shoot you saw me in a subway <laughs> you, you saw me underneath the brooklyn bridge like we did we did uh you know spots in new york where you definitely could tell we were on the east coast they never do that in playboy mm. so she so she basically does playboy now and then mm-hmm. you know everything is 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 now starting to happen for coco the mm-hmm. internet's on fire she's in the magazines she's mm-hmm. all over the place and I would, and I need to give love to because I have like give love because this is my chance to, to to thank everybody. I have like I don't know eight over eight million followers on Facebook, and I appreciate every one of them. It's just a, such a blessing to go there, and that's why I try to talk to people. I can't talk to everybody, but I try to answer some questions. That's why, and I, if you ask me a question, I'll try to answer it back. Um, because I try to give love back. That's mm. one thing I can do to you. That's I mean, I try to give out free pictures, like I says. But you know, there's also some things that I'm doing that I try to help women nowadays. You know, now now people are coming to me. Hey, Coco, how can I have this body? Okay, well, girl, I got a fitness app. You know, um, that, I mean, I kind of just do whatever comes into the program, like whatever is laid on my lap. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to say something and, you know, you correct me if I'm wrong, but Coco being my assistant and being by my side for six years before she really came back in the game, mm-hmm. she got a good chance to see how I treat people, you know, and I didn't just treat people a certain way. I explained to her, mm-hmm. you got to love these people. And I'm mm-hmm. so proud because I watch pe- Coco with the same you know, attitude. respect and attitude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you know how I am, Mickey. Yeah. That's how we work with people. Because yep. I'm like, these people are important to you. They make or break you. And mm-hmm. people don't have to like you. No, they don't. they don't. They don't have to like you. And one of the things that happened with Coco mm-hmm. was the big thing. There was a moment, a while where everybody, her butt is fake. Mm-hmm. And I had to tell Coco, I'm like, you got to take that as a compliment. You have to take it as a compliment. It's mm-hmm. un believable right. it's like right. it's super natural mm-hmm. right but it, it, it now girls are getting butt implants and stuff mm-hmm. like that when coco broke on the scene that wasn't even yeah. a possibility yeah, it just, right it's just breast mm-hmm. implants so yeah yeah, yeah. Hunky, not yeah. Hunky. and she's been very honest she said yeah i got boob implants that they seen tell you what's real you know mm-hmm. but you know this shit is mashed potatoes and gravy you know this and she went as far as going on the doctors on tv and they letting had, them yeah i saw that grab the shit yeah so she did but when she after she did that you did something in Vegas called a peep show at right. uh, Planet yeah. well, Hollywood, I mean, right? It, just, it has been rolling. It was, I, I, that's why I said I want to thank everybody from it because I, you know, I did Isos Coco. Right after that, I went to Peep Show. Three seasons of Isos Coco. Three seasons of Isos Coco. Uh, peep Show, which was uh, a show at it. Planet Hollywood, ten months. Damn, almost a year in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. they kept on renewing the contract. Mm-hmm. And uh, I came back to New York, and that's when I started Vanity Vixens, which what is, is Vanity similar. Vixen, though, that's for the audience who don't yeah, know. Yeah, Vanity Vixens is, is a new show that I'm doing, an off-Broadway show out here in New York. And it's similar to Peep Show, which when I say similar, it means burlesque. And, uh, you know, out there in Peep Show, it was an amazing show with great talent, great dancers, great singers, comedy, everything. So we brought that out to New York because New York does not have a show like that. New York has a lot of Broadway shows like Wicked, Lion King, all that good stuff, but they do not have a like a broad. A, I'm sorry, a, a burlesque show. Now, who helps you create this show? The Vanity Vixen. Yes. Okay. So Kellen Stanton from Lion King, he is the dance coach 
for Lion King right now. He played on Lion King? He's a dance, dance coach. coach. Wow. For Lion King, yes. He, this is his baby. He started this um, this show, Vanity Vixens, in Vegas. And um, when he got the call to do Lion King, he had to stop his show and move to New York. So he brought the show to New York. Um, and the girl that was with me, and she's also a dance coach for Peep Show, she called me up since they know each other and said, Coco, will you be interested in, be, you know, mm-hmm. being Vanity Vixens? And I said, um, I'm not sure. What, what is it? So I went to the auditions. I saw the auditions and I fell in love. Uh, the dancers are amazing. You have to think. I'm in New York. This is the home of the great dancers. This is where dancers come from Sweden to Australia to everywhere. Mm-hmm. They want to live here in New York to be a part of a show. And you're going to get the best of the best here in New York. And what do you know? Danny Vixens came alive. It, so, so we've had a couple shows. We just had the last one at, um, at Gramercy Theater in New York on New Year's Eve. And it was it was great. It was crazy. It was crazy. We just have to find the right theater for it right now. People are saying, when's the next show? When's the next show? But this show is a very intimate show. It doesn't go in a huge theater. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and it's it's hard. It's weird to say you're in New York, but it's hard to find a theater for our show. Mm-hmm. So that we're looking for a theater for Vanity Vixens. We're looking for somebody so we could get that on Broadway on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of other things. Just really quickly break okay. down all your different businesses you got happening right now. Okay, well, if I'm missing anything, everybody check out Coco'sWorld.com. Coco'sWorld.com, that's the hub. That's the hub of everything you might be missing. Um, And this past year, like like we were talking about, you know, Coco's Workout World came out where I, you know. Well, you can get that. You can get that on iTunes. You can get iTunes. Um, Then then I came out with Pleasure Products. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Pleasure Products. What the (laughs) fuck are you talking about? I always don't know what that is. What is that? Pleasure products are basically sex toys. I like to just, you know, buff it out with pleasure products. I like that word better. Um, But, yeah, so it's through California Exotics. It's the biggest factory in the world that makes sex toys. And I have my own line called Coco-licious. And uh, you can take, you know, you can go to the store and get it. You know, go to adult store. Or you can also go online and buy my products. Girls, you're going to love it because I'm about to come out with my second collection. My first collection was anything you can conceal in your purse. It's very fun and glittery and sparkly and like girls are going to want... If you've ever tried a sex toy, you got to give my toys a shot because it's really fun and I think you'd be thinking twice about it. Um, my second uh, collection is about to come out and that's all about lotions you know, and massage candles and a lot of good stuff. Um, I, I can't speak a lot, a lot, but it's for 2015, Ice and I have got some big projects in the works. Well, you're forgetting your clo- clothing line. Yeah, but I was going to say big projects in the works, so I can't talk about it, a lot of stuff. Um, but you got your, you got your app, you got your pleasure products, you got your clothing line. You got your Broadway show that you're trying to jump off. <laughs> and then you got a lot of secret projects that me and you got yes. that we can't really talk about yes. right now. A lot and, of juiciness coming up. A lot of I good can't stuff. wait to tell you guys. And, reason, you guys. and the reason in this business you don't talk because you will jinx your shit is you come out and you talk about something that's supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. You almost guarantee it won't happen. So mm-hmm. just stay, you know, stay in tune this year, 2015. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, one more thing. I, I, I have to say this every time on radio of some sort is that I have a blog called The Coco Blog. And um, girls love it because I talk about fitness and makeup and hair and nails. And, and uh, you know, guys like to watch it too. But at the same time, <laughs> they like the pictures, of course. Um, I do shoe giveaways. And um, I think it really, it, it's like an interactive site where, you know, if you have, if you wear a size six, then I give out shoes to my fans because everybody knows I'm a shoe freak. Mickey talked about me having a song oh, called yeah, we Shoe play Freak. That, Just, I like that record. Yeah, we got to play that song. Oh, yes. Yeah. And shoe then, Freak. <laughs> shoe but Freak. But the, 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 the people that are interested, since I talk about shoes so much, I love to give away personal items of mine. So that's the only reason why I do it. So go check that out. Go to the blog, see what I'm all about, because that will really like, you know, you'll a fine tune of who Coco really is. And that's the 
Coco Block. But I, I saw Coco. Didn't you have a stream one time? You were talking to the people? Did you have a stream? What yeah, it's that? called a spreecast. I like to do those because it's like this. I'm I'm, uh, I'm a podcast. I'm talking to you all, and mm-hmm. we're doing an interview. But a spreecast, I'm actually... Um, in front of people on their on their computer, and they pop up video wise, and I talk to them. Oh. So we see. Well, where I, can I, see that at? Or where can they hear it? She does those. She does them randomly. Yeah, it's I do random. them randomly. It's randomly. Not 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 every week. But I'm going to try to do it on a monthly basis because it does. It, you know, you can hear me you talk. Interact and, with your audience. And I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I really like to interact with them too. Coco, you got a lot going on. When you find time for iced tea, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, it's you all good. Like I, second, but I do this. I, I'll under Ice's dressing room because I get up in the morning every single day. Not right under now. my dressing room. Well, I'm sorry. I Every single day I get up in the morning, 5 o'clock, and we go to the set. Mm-hmm. And in the dressing room, I am I, I post my office up. And I'm with him all day long. So I never am away from Ice. So he sees me do all of this. Under him. Yeah, because the internet is so easy, she can carry the laptop. She gets, she'll set up anywhere. If I'm in a recording studio, she'll set that laptop up, and that's the office. It's called her virtual office, bro. Mm-hmm. And this she chick works. works with it. This chick works constantly, mm-hmm. and what we basically have decided is like at night, like I say, we go to radio silence. We say, okay, it's eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Computers are off. Nobody's mm-hmm. bleeding, so we don't need to be answering the phones. Mm-hmm. And we have our little time where we watch our little television and stuff. And then we do it the next day. And then usually on Sundays, we're either doing a podcast or we're just taking a little time mm-hmm. alone. Or watching Super Bowl last week, you know. Yeah. But you know what, Coco? What? Why don't we play that song? Since Mickey oh, wants to hear it. Got the place shoot okay. for you. Okay. And then, okay, if you hear the song, let me tell you. Break it down. Just, Okay. Don't take it personal. This is supposed to be a funny sit back and laugh at it. I'm well, why trying... did we do this song to begin I... with? Explain it. Uh, let me explain it. When we were doing Ice Loves Coco, you know, we were we had a segment where we were talking about pop music. And I was telling Coco, I'm like, you know what? Pop music right now is kind of like cookie cutter. It's easy to do. So I know enough guys. You, you Just any idea you want. So I got with Kenny Dope. One of the greatest, you know, Producer. producers mm-hmm. of music dance, music, dance music, house music. And he gave us a track. And I told Coco, make a song about anything you like. And I said, shoes. And she said, shoes. And we it got is. we got the guy that used to work on uh, Law and Order, Brian Badi. Which is a friend of ours. And a flaming queen. That's my dude. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Brian comes in and he plays Coco's stylist on the record. And mm-hmm. it's meant to be funny. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've sold a lot of these damn records. I, so, yeah, you know what? And I'm thinking about actually doing a funny video to it. Because you should. It's just, you should. It's, it's, you're supposed to laugh at right it. Right after this people, podcast, though. After reason, this podcast. Only reason why I mentioned that to you, because some people really took it like I was trying hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I was really trying to be like a singer. And I'm like, no, this is funny. This was something that I just did to prove a point. Yeah, but it's something fun. And, and, and I think every woman needs this on her iPod just so she could, you know, Fantasize about shoes. This is Coco and this is Shoe Freak. What do you want for Christmas? Shoes. Valentine's Day? Shoes. Birthday? Shoes. What do you want for breakfast? Shoes. Shoe Freak!
showrooms exclusively just for you. They're too fabulous for even Vogue, honey, in a fabulous size 9. A size 9? I wear a size 6, bitch. Are you crazy? I love my shoes. I love my shoes. I love my shoes. I love my shoes. I want to fuck them. Jimmy Choo. Yves Saint Laurent. Giuseppe. Christian Vuitton, Prada, Valentino, Alexander McQueen, Dior, Ferragamo, Dolce Cabana, Miu Miu, Brian Atwood, Sergio Rossi, Fendi, Louis Vuitton, Lorenzi, Patent Leather, Bondage Boots, huh? Exotic reptile designer platforms. Peep toe ankle straps. Oh. Suede dummy boots. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, you better work, bitch. You ain't walking, girl. You better walk in them heels, honey. The girls, let them have it, honey. Ah, uh ah, -uh, ah, uh -uh, stop. You better work, bitch. Girl, you are hurting my feelings right now. I wish I was you. You walking like you bad for girl in them six inch heels. Working, honey, make all the hoes hate you. Hate you. Hate you. Hate you. Flat. I don't think so. Flat. I don't think so. Flat. I don't think so. Shoes. I love my shoes. I love my shoes. I love my shoes. Shoe freak. Hey, Coco, that was dope. That yeah, was dope. I appreciated that. That was hard. That was. That, that, yo, wait a minute. I, I gotta play that song again, man. <laughs> I'm gonna download it and I'm gonna play it at home because that was hot to me. Flash. That was hot. I don't think so. But you know, you got a sense of humor and you got good sport. That was my, once again an ice idea. Mm -hmm. And you just roll with it. It wasn't like Coco was like, Ice, I wanna make a record. Ice, I want a record. I said, No, Coco, I wanna make a record just to show people how easy it is mm -hmm. to make a record. Mm -hmm. And she did it. Well mm -hmm. well, baby, that was a good interview. Thanks. Are you ready to ride the rest of this podcast out with us? Okay, what's next? Let's go. Okay, uh, welcome to Fine Level Podcast number 29 with Coco. And this is the, one of the favorite segments of the show. It's mm -hmm. called I'm Not a Hater. But I hate shit. You know what I hate, Coco? What do you hate? I hate people that want to correct your spelling on the internet. What, when you when you are on Twitter or whatever, and they got the time to fucking correct your spelling. That's because they're looking at a dictionary. They can't now, spell they, any they, fucking way. I mean, look how many how many you had? One hundred and twenty characters. Yeah, you're usually typing with one fucking hand. You're trying to get your your your, your message out there, and they what they call them they call them 
What do they call them? They call them spelling Nazis. I don't even care when I spell something wrong on a cell phone or on a Twitter. You know what? Because it's very little letters. People you know you what got you your mean. So on anyway. I mean, exactly. The, the thing is, like, did they ever do that to you, Coco? Well, I, I mean, if you went on my Twitter last week, it was it, that's what we were talking about. Really? Yeah. What did they say? Talking. About. Well, the thing is, like, mm-hmm. I made a comment, and I think I said something like, "I hate when people correct your grammar," mm-hmm. and and it's like, and it's frustrating because. Most of the time, your phone does auto checks. It does its own thing, it has its own it's brain, so you don't even know when you did something wrong. It spells it wrong, wrong too, exactly. Yeah, your your phone will spell it wrong. So, but the thing is, you you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Why do you got to come in and correct me? It's a chance to correct you. Anytime they get a chance to correct you, I block them. Yeah. When you, if, I mean, motherfucker, you know what I'm trying to say. I don't need you to. The other day I wrote something and they were like, no, it's not two, it's two with two O's. I'm like, <laughs> all right, grandma fuck? teacher, get offline. Get the what fuck the out of here. Teachers? That shit yeah. is ridiculous. It's like, right. really, right. you know, and, uh, and how are you going to express yourself? And it's really 140 characters. How are you going to express I, yourself? In that little amount of like, well, you just corrected me now. I'm gonna block you. I know. I just you. Friend. <laughs> so you're blocked. You're not gonna block me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, the thing is, like, it, but that doesn't give you a lot. 140 characters is not a lot of space. So you have to become cute with your phrases. You have to, you have to say you like the with the letter U. With the, with the U only. Yeah. Yes, you, know, you have to shorten things. Oh, up you too. might be using the dictionary, and then yeah, that's good. That's what it is, baby. Because we don't care. We don't need Webster's dictionary. It's yeah. just a matter of getting the point across on Twitter, and those people that really feel the need to correct spelling or correct grammar. I mean, maybe in their brain, it makes them feel superior for that mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm smarter than you. You know, J-Lo, mm-hmm. I can talk better than you. Or, mm-hmm. you know, whoever they're correcting at the time. It's such bullshit. It's such petty shit. You know what's so funny? Most of the people, <laughs> no, but most of the people that actually write on Twitter and Facebook, they do a lot of fucking spell check. I don't need to spell check. I spelled it, and that's what I said. That's all. You know what yeah, I mean? you know, so... so if you ever decide to correct somebody's grammar or somebody's spelling on Twitter or Facebook, you're a fucking asshole. And, you know, just like in, in the illustrious words of Ice T, go eat a hot bowl of dicks and next you will time. Be and blocked. Think about it. It's, it's just stupid. It doesn't provide anyone any help. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've had people that if I might have spelled the word wrong, they might just tweet it back to me, the word, like in a way, like trying to help you, like eh, it's a mistake. Mm-hmm. I'm not mad at that. I'm, I'm mad at the people that go all the way to try to tell you you don't know how to talk or some bullshit like that. It's like, just let it ride. If you understood the statement, let it ride. This shit is Twitter. It's on the timeline. It's going to be gone. This is not being written in the fucking, you know, uh, Library of Congress or some shit. You know, Moses isn't going to pull it out and write it into some tablets wrong. This is some bullshit. Mm -hmm. Get over it. I'm not a hater, but I hate hate shit. And I hate spelling Nazis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Coco, you ready to go to the phone line? Okay. Yo, what's up? This is Ice-T and Coco and Mick Benzo. Who's on the line? Uh, My name is Blossom. I'm calling from Colorado. Um, I really wanted to talk to Coco because... Um, I look at her toys all the time, and I kind of had a suggestion, like coming from like, because I'm a lesbian, so coming from the lesbian community, we always look at your toys, so I was wondering, maybe if you can go to make some strap-ons, or like some for us, you know, design some, you know, we always buy your toys, look at your shop, so me and my girlfriend were like, dude, Coco should make some strap-ons. Ah, oh, you're talking about my toys. Okay, Coco Wishes toys. Yeah. Um. Well, you know what? Yeah. I, there, it's it's they're called collection items, and what happens is you have to like the the last items I had were things you can conceal in your purse. The next one's gonna be more like massage oils and lubricants and, and you know all the stuff that is very kind of like used on your body. And um, so you never know what that's gonna be my collection next. But this is what you're suggesting I need to do. Not if I got anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. You know, because a lot of lesbians look at your toys. You know, we buy all your toys, and 
you know, like, we like strap-ons, we like, you know, maybe two-way dildos or something, so maybe you should make a collection of it. Oh, okay. Make one of them yours. Yeah. See, I like it. I ain't mad at the two. This is ice. I ain't mad at the two way dildo, but the strap on. I don't want to give out the idea that she uses that damn thing. But see, the thing <laughs> is, <laughs> well, obviously we don't want her to use it on you. We know that. You know, that she <laughs> she's not gonna want to be like, hey, IT, let me just strap the strap on and and let's do it in the app. No. No. Her, you know, people that adore her look at her stuff all the time, you know, people, like, people that are customers, you know, it's something I'm just suggesting. No, yeah, you know what, and what I'm doing is taking, like, everyday stuff you see at an adult toy store, and I'm, I'm, I try to cocoify it, you know, so if I were to do a strap-on, like you said, I would make it, you know, sparkly and cutesy, you know, I wouldn't do the... She gave her a sparkly dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Yes, but I take suggestions, I take suggestions, so thank you so much for uh, calling in, and uh, even thanks for calling in, just saying hi, what's up? Thank you very much. Thank you, alright, kisses, bye. Hey, what's cracking, this is Ice-T, Coco, and Mick Benzo on the podcast. Who's what we talking to? Hey, this is Sergeant Jerry Connor from Virginia. I just wanted to give you and your beautiful wife some tips up and give you a little secret if you guys wanted to hear it about some things we did with you guys in Iraq and you're interested in hearing about it. Go for it. Tell me what's happening. Well, two things. My wife, I'm a big, I'm a big, big fan of the band and I miss you guys on Mayhem this year. That kind of stuff ass. But when I was in NATO, I ended up picking up when they tried to ban the original version because the cop killer wouldn't play it. I picked it up in some uh, places downtown in Brooklyn. But when I went back to Iraq the second time, I took that bitch with me. Well, dude, I got a dude for you, man. We played that bitch over the loudspeaker over the chopper 24 7. <laughs> and every time we did something for the right reasons, there goes the neighborhood with blaring at 11. That's I wanted you to know that your efforts, man, made a big difference to our troops. It really has. And it's, it's a big bond between white and black. No one gives you, there's no atheist in foxhole. Nobody in the army gives a damn what color you are. And I think you and Coco portray that. A beautiful white woman, a killer black guy, you know, a model and a musician. It's a dream come true. And for all of us that don't give a damn what color we are and what problems are going in the world, man, you, you guys roll for it. And we use that. But I will say this. Coco, I've got posters of you. <laughs> my wife sent them to me. And I have no I, I have no idea what happened to them in Iraq. I'm afraid to even ask. When I tell you this some bitches disappeared quick, Aww. they disappeared quick, man. They did. Hey, hey, Sarge, what MOS are you? I was a 31 Lima. You was in, bro. I, what I ended up doing was pumping the fat radio all the time. I was always in the choppers. Now they got fat phones. Okay. Now you can call anywhere you want. Back starting the day, back in Desert Storm. And the second time we had we had phones, but the first time we had these huge ass radios, and you had to have a, a TSI to carry a security clearance. And once mm. I got that security clearance, dude, I was doing all kinds of jumping maneuvers and crazy shit. Some of the stuff we're not allowed to talk about, of course. But mm. but uh, so what, what exactly did you do when you were in? I forgot. I was eleven bang bang. I'm a ranger. Oh, you was 11 Bravo. I was with you guys. I was the only scrub there. All you guys, they, I, they put me. Yeah, they, I had to go with all. I had to go with the Rangers, 5th Special Forces, 10th Mountain, because they didn't have a way to talk to Link back in division. So every time 12 of us flew out to go do something, they used my radio to talk back to the rear. And, and you know, you know how it goes when you got a satellite radio. If you don't got it, you just can't tell you what's going on. That's right. Hey, hey, well, Sarge, we got to keep it going. We got a lot of people on the line, but thank you so much for calling. I got you, bro. And thanks for your yes, service. That's so sweet. If I see you, I'll sign your posters, too. Thank you, too. You guys that's really right. made a smile. You oh, guys yeah. just a couple. Thank you. That was so sweet of you. Final Level Podcast, Ice-T, Nick, Benzo, and Coco. Who's this and where you calling from? My name's Annabelle. I have a question for Coco. When are you planning to come to a movie. I'm just waiting on the, like the right appropriate uh, scripts. You know, I get some, you know, scripts here and there and it's not like the best, you know, parts, but um, I'm up for being in a movie. It's just I really haven't pushed at all. I think you know? she should be in a superhero movie, me uh, personally. I, I would like yeah. to take some ass. That would be... Or a gladiator yeah. movie. Yeah. 
totally. I would love yeah. that. But, you know, I, I just I haven't really pushed oh. that direction. So a lot of people ask me to do it, so I might give it a try. Uh, and why are you guys coming back on reality TV? We miss you. Well, we, we basically stopped the show. Reality TV, you got to deal with it special way. You can't be on there too long because people will burn out on you. So we figured people got our life. They, un they understand our life, Max and Spark. And also part of show business is mystery. You know, you got to kind of keep us a little yeah. mysterious. That kind of makes people more interested. But we do have something happening. Yeah, we got some stuff in the works right now. For television this year. But it's not a reality show. That's all yes. we can that's all yes. we can say. I can't wait. Yes, we, it, it will be out in the press pretty soon. So uh, just keep on following, girl. You're going to love it. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. 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 Hey, this is Ice T, Mick Benzo, and Coco. Who's this, and where you calling from? My name's Lyra. Yeah, I wanted to talk to Coco. Um, she's like such an inspiration to me because I'm like a bigger woman as well, and like I have a big butt and all. But it's so hard for me to find clothes. <laughs> like I just can't find Maybe any clothes that fit over my butt. Yeah, well, you know what, girl? I've had that problem, like, my whole life. And what I usually do is I get clothes bigger than what I, I really am. So, like, if you're, you're a size 5, I get, like, a size 9, and I tailor it to around my booty. So, like, I always take my, my waist in, and then also I'm 5'2", I'm a shorty, too. So I always have to like take my uh, my my pants in from the bottom, and uh, but just recently since I've had that problem, I started my own clothing line called Licious, and and I don't know if you you checked it out uh, before, but it's called LiciousClothing.com. You can go to the website, but it's all clothes that stretch to your body, like it conforms onto your body. So, and it also, if you like a certain item and it goes to like a specific size that you buy on the website, we can also custom and tailor it to your body. So, uh, I I always tell girls like the, my main jeans that I love to wear is the classic jeans that I have on my Licious website. It's dope. They're high, so they, they don't cut your booty off and they're really, really comfortable. So check them out. You don't wear regular blue jeans? No, honestly, I can't. I, you have to wear something with stretch. There's no way I can wear just regular yeah. jeans. There's no way. But you know what? When Coco says get her jeans tailored, it's at the dry cleaners. You know, she just has, you know, she got a relationship with the girl at the dry, at cleaners. The dry cleaners. And when she buys her clothes, she always throws them on the floor and says, okay, these got to go in for alterations. Mm -hmm. I mean, even guys, everybody, you just can't necessarily think you're going to fit stuff off the rack. You know, a lot of times it's good to have a relationship with a, somebody, a seamstress or somebody that can, mm -hmm. you know, don't take it personal. You just need right. a special fit. But you then know? also you got to think of it, like always get si bigger sizes. You know, you, a lot of girls when they go and they, they, they pick up like a size zero. Girl, you're not a size zero. Yeah. Get what? Get like what are five sizes up? Five sizes up to cover your booty, and then get them tailored in to conform to your body. But that's the reason why you gotta go to Licious, girl. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> um, I really wanted to meet you at the Mayhem in Houston, but y'all didn't show. Oh, we'll so be back. Really, really sad. We'll be back. Definitely, yeah. we travel a lot, so. I hope so. Yes, well, come to wherever I'm at, because I'm open, we'll take pictures, it'll be cute. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hey, so look, Thanks. look, Bye. look, we had a lot of people call in, I think there's like 60 or 70 people mm -hmm. in the line, mm -hmm. but we're, this will have to be the last caller, because we got shit to do, but this is the final caller for this podcast, who's on the line and where are you calling from? Yo, what's up, Ice and Coco? This is David Bass from Los Angeles. When are you two going to be interviewed by the great Howard Stern? <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, we know we know the people over there, but um, they've been trying to get us for a while now, right, babe? Yeah, well, you know, with Howard Stern, I was mad at Howard Stern for a while, because back in the day, when we went through all the cop killer stuff, Howard was saying some crazy stuff, you know? And 
I wasn't I, I wasn't happy about that. But then just recently, he heard a body count record and he made a positive comment about it. He said he liked it. So you know, Howard how is a shock jock, and he says crazy stuff. And uh, we've been able to work with a lot of people that work with Howard Stern. So I feel eventually we'll actually get on there. You know, I'm not I don't hold a grudge like that. But uh, you know, back in the day, you go on Howard Stern. And he would be quick to throw you under the bus or do some crazy shit to you, you know? And I always felt like my career was big enough that I didn't really need negative press or anything, you know, sabotage press or anything like that. But like you say, now he's evolved. He's much more relaxed and cool. Plus, Coco is friends with his wife. Yeah, Beth Stern. Well, yeah. they're going well, well, to have to come on the podcast when we go to Howard Stern. <laughs> they have to come to us. Howard Stern got to mess with us. Yeah. Yeah, we need him to come on the podcast first. Yeah, I was still got to come fuck with us for a while, man. Then we can come over there and rock out with him, you know? <laughs> come on, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, take care. Boom. All right. All right, that was the last call. Coco, that was kind of fun, right? Yeah, we have 200 people sitting in line. I got to take them off my, my uh, I got to tell them that we shut it down. <laughs> well, you know, that's just how it goes. No, they're going to know because this thing is going to basically cut off. But that, mm-hmm. that shows you got a lot of people out there. Nice. I'm not gonna mention no names, but we didn't have people on the podcast, and we opened the phone lines up, and they got... had none. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I said that. I said that. <laughs> nah, 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 Coco. That's just that's just mm-hmm. a a you well, know. I actually can do that all day long because I like to do that on the net, but I hate writing. Right. So this it's, is nice, yeah, it's, it's nice. Easy. It's nice to get on the phone and talk. You know, voice to voice. Maybe that's what you should do one well, we day. We should get set you up and let you do that there. Right? No, 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 no. I just came no. up with an idea. I came I, up with an my idea. Podcast no, I'm saying she can do that on the stream and we can set the number up and she can actually talk to No, I friends. think, no, but I got an idea. My podcast idea, is just baby? taking the I, questions. Off. I got an idea. You said you could do it all day long. Mm-hmm. So what you should do is a marathon stream. You okay. should do a stream that lasts like six hours. Okay. Like the world's longest live stream, oh, where you can just see how long people. Okay. Well, continue. what is the longest right now? We gotta beat that. Oh, we gotta find out the Guinness Book of World Records. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and what we do is we'll set it up, mm-hmm. and you will just answer questions all day long. If you have to break to eat, they'll sit there and watch you eat. Okay. And you just talk all day. I would love you, that actually. You said you could do it all day long. I could. I could actually. No, well, because when I'm on my spree, when I'm on my spree cast, it, like two hours goes like that, you know, and yeah. it doesn't give a not a lot of opportunity for everybody. Like people from across the world, when I do my spree cast, they'll call from from China to from Sweden, from yeah, Australia. Overseas, yeah. They call everywhere, and I, I they, that was just so we many followers that I have that I want to give everybody a chance. Hey, Coco, you know, yes. I know you, but I, I, I mean, you know. It's always good just to hear your story and to hear you talk. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I always tell people, they say, well, what, what's, what's up with Coco? I'm like, Coco is the nicest person I ever met in my life. <laughs> Anybody that knows her knows she's a sweetheart. She don't, she ain't got a mean bone in her body. She's just a nice person, like an angel who wants everybody to be nice. Unfortunately, everybody <laughs> yeah. ain't nice. She said, everybody can everybody get along? Can right. everybody get along? Yes. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, Thanks for being on the show. Anything you want to say Thanks on the way out, Coke? Having, I, like I said before, when I came on, I want to say um, uh, thank you to everybody. I just started Instagram just recently. Thank you on Instagram. Thank you on Twitter. Thank you on Facebook. Uh, and if you want to follow me there, I even mentioned this before. I keep on saying those those websites. But Coco'sWorld.com is my website. Uh, Coco's World is Twitter. Coco is my name on Instagram and Facebook. So, you know, check me out there and hopefully I can talk to someone soon. You know, we'll do a spree cast or maybe um, I'll talk to you through my social net media. Fly, baby, fly. She did a thizzle. You know what I'm saying? We done had you, Coco, you the superstar. We done had you sitting right here making sandwiches, making Kool-Aid for us. You know, in the background, helping when the people come over here for That's the right. podcast. You're the right. host. That's You've been right. the host, and you turn out to be the biggest star in the goddamn yeah. podcast. Yeah. Damn! <laughs> God damn it, what the fuck are we doing here? Damn, we should have been did this. I, Fine. I 
need my own podcast. Yeah, so maybe, you know, that might be in that might be in the future. <laughs> that's what you want. Yeah, it'd be in the future. Don't say it too loud. Mika try to manage you. <laughs> listen, listen, to all the listeners out there, do us a favor. Subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe yes. to iTunes for us. You go to iTunes, you go to Ice T Final Level Podcast. Subscription is F R E E. Once you do that, each time we put a podcast out, you do not have to look for us iTunes will find you and send it to you. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to cost you nothing. It ain't going to do nothing to your phone, but it will help to keep the podcast free. Coco, right. I love right. you to death. Thank okay. you for coming. Say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, mm -hmm. for having me. Thank you, we guys. Ice, it. thank you. Mwah, 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 mwah. And Mickey, you. say goodbye. I appreciate it, baby. My wife was here, but she was real quiet. Hey, yes. look, I'd uh -huh. rather do this. Ice, guess what? I'm out here like I stole something. I'd rather see him and be you. Be good. That's how, that's how, that's how, that's how, that's how, that's how I'm living. That's how, that's how, that's how, that's how, that's how, that's how I'm living. That's how, that's how, that's how, that's how, that's how I'm living. That's that's how I'm living. That's that's how I'm living. That's how, that's how, that's how, that's how, that's how I'm living. That's 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 how I'm living. That's how, that's how, that's how, that's how I'm living. That's that's how I'm living. That's that's how I'm living.